Hello guys, so today I'm here joined by Bowie Effect who just won over 1 million dollars in GG uh, 10k So what's up man, how are you doing? Are you, how does it feel to win over 1 million dollars? Uh, I mean it's just incredible to have an online 7 figure score I mean even a live 7 figure score would be sick uh, but online it feels extra special, I think, especially in such a tough tournament. So, I mean, I've been feeling really good since. Um, obviously, it didn't quite close the tournament, but second place is still an incredible result for me. And, you know, I'm very, very happy about it, for sure. Okay. Uh, how did it all ga game about? Like, uh, did you plan on playing this tournament or you just, like, uh, randomly played it? Or, like, w w what are you doing? What are you up to in general these days? Like, do you play a lot online? Uh, I've started playing more again this year. I was traveling a lot end of last year, so I wasn't really active. Like, I just had a period of inactivity. I was traveling Australia, just doing things outside of poker, enjoying the money I've made, making like 2022 and such, 2021, whatever. Um, but what happened was basically I managed, I've just been decided to play on GG UK again, but I've been having deposit limit issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did, I did have enough money to play the GG 5K on Sunday. Uh, I sold some action in the clients, but then I took loads of bounties and so on, made the FT of that. Uh, I was even chip leader in that tournament as well. Uh, ended up coming fourth, got like 55k, I think. And um, I hadn't played any of the 10k flights prior to that, and I wasn't planning to play it, but I upped the guarantee, and it had an over 10 mil prize pool. Uh, this last chance fight's always really good because so many of the regs, you know, just back during the week. So you actually get a bit of a softer flight as you play later in the in the, in the week, if that makes sense, because yeah. it's like a phase call. Yeah. I, 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 when I play um, those, I always used to be like, I, I didn't just want to play the fir first uh, ones at all because, like, mm -hmm. it was just rakes only, kind of, unless a lot of savvy yeah. ran. Yeah, so um, on the Monday at 3 p.m., I just was awake and was ready to, you know, was going to play a bit. Um, I, I, I should even have day two of the anniversary, really. I busted all six bullets on Sundays. <laughs> I didn't even have that to play, but, uh, uh, but no, I was just kind of feeling like I wanted to play the 10k and just have a bit of a parlay. Um, and yeah, the last chance tournament was just sick. Like the starting lobby was really wreck heavy, so I just got in at the start and I just span up a really big stack. Like I, um, I, I remember I cracked aces with ace ten off blind v blind, just turned. I flopped a pair and just turned trips. And then after that, I was like, oh, this might go pretty well then. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, um, not even in the money, I had thirty starting stacks. You know, which is like crazy oh, wow. for ten k. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a huge stack. Um, I think I backed third overall in chips for day two. And then I just like made two massive hands really early on. I flush over flushed a guy, but in small blind, a guy that had more than average two, and then got max value with aces against the recreational. And then suddenly I had like sixty starting stacks or something ridiculous. <laughs> 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 and yeah, basically from there I was never really out of the top four. I like kind of dipped here and there in the middle of the tournaments. And then I took a load of chips off Smiler, final three tables, final two tables, and after that I was a huge chip leader. And I basically carried that all the way to the final table. It was like a you know, I never really felt it. I was never short in this tournament, basically. Wow. Ever, which was really insane. That is the... It's like one of those tournaments. It's very nice to Sunrun, right? It's like... It, oh, it, absolutely, yeah. It does not really happen very often. I have had my moments, but like... it, It's not normal to just like... Peak, whenever you get a big stack early on, I always feel like, okay, it's going to be like a deep run. I'm going to GG at 20th or 30th. It's going to end around there, like typically, so... Yeah. It is uh, a little yeah, bit... Yeah, no, that happens all the time to me as well, yeah, but this tournament was just really special. <laughs> that just never seemed to... That need never seemed to happen at any point, you know? It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then it happens in the biggest one, eh? Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest tournaments of the year, right? So, I mean, I picked my spot pretty yeah. damn well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you... Did you... Did you prepare for day two? So the the final table is being played the next day, right? Did you do any prep yes. for that? Um, actually, no. I took a different approach than usual. So like when I've when I've made FTs before, and like when I made the FT in Florida, I ran sims. I crammed sims, you know. But because I've been doing a lot of work this year with Bitby, uh, the CFP, I I mean obviously I'm a coach of BBC as well, but um, I've been doing CFP stuff with Bitby. Um, we do so much study like during the week. But actually today, I can't, I, well, into Tuesday, I kind of took a different approach because I'm trying to be a bit more mindful and, you know, like, not, and find a bit more balance in life as well as just playing poker nonstop, you know? Um, mm. That's why I've relocated back home and I'm reconnecting with friends again and such. Um, what I just decided to do was just get outside and go in and you know, get out in the fresh air. I literally just walked around all day listening to music, like, 
was talking to people about non-poker things really um kind of tried a much different approach than i was you know than i generally have done in the past whereas where like i said i would just try and cram ft sims and you know <laughs> like situations <laughs> that might not even come up so i kind of just relied upon the fact that i'd done a bunch of study in the past and my game should be pretty sharp yeah like in the, I, in the scenarios i always kind of feel the same but if, whenever it's like very big spot i'm just like it's just professional thing to do. I'm going to run run uh, scenarios, so I will be 100% uh, kind of certain about how it's going to play out and what my strategies are going to look like. But like, yeah, like, it's not like, uh, I think like, I often see like guys uh, making live or some big file labels, then I get the message in Discord and guys asking like, hey, I have this big file label, can you teach me how to play file labels? I'm like, when is it? Tomorrow. Uh, I don't know how how are you supposed to be studying in like twenty four hours everything about about it. So you need yeah. to have really good yeah, like exactly. uh, like theory base, and after that you can just get, look things up and you kind of know how it's uh, going to be. Okay, let's... yeah, I imagine with those people you would always say, "Oh, too late." Basically, you know, if you're going to be quite honest with them, <laughs> yeah. they go there, well, you don't know, like. Yeah, the, um... I think that's quite normal but if you have all the theory it's like just makes sense to run a few sims it's gonna give you a lot at that point i would think but okay yeah, for sure let's review it so you open yeah so uh, i mean we could talk about my um my seat selection because we got to seat select in this i wasn't sure if you were able to or not but yeah we got to seat select oh okay um, yeah so so i put myself uh i put sergio i, I sat on the right of Sergio Ido, um, he's a friend of mine, Spanish rank, obviously well known. Um, but I think in these spots, he is a bit tighter. So that was pretty deliberate ploy for me because as a big chip leader, you're actually going to get folded to in the small blind way more often than, you know, in Nash, like for chips. So actually being able to just like open shit blindly blind or just play RFI, like it's actually pretty sick. Like it kind of reverses a little bit in these spots sometimes, you know, where like if you're the massive chip leader, you just like, you actually make loads of chips out of position to apply just because you keep hammering them blind versus blind. So that you'll actually see that happen, I think, a lot in this FT. It's just like worth pointing out. Um, it was a very deliberate like selection from me. I put Artor on my right, and then Lee's Flower, who's a uh, Felipe Boyanovsky, Felipe Piv on stars. Yeah, he's second in chips, and, and like mm -hmm. having him one from my right is kind of cool because I can also just flat his late position opens. Um, like if you have a side jack, I'll flat button, and I'm gonna play like lots of flats and not much free bets. You know, my free bets can be really polar and for big sizes if they occur. You know, and that was kind of my game plan here. Okay, um, so do, do just some context. typically I think how you want to go about it is like often whenever you're like the middling stack, people are like, oh, I don't want to be like next to the big stack, right? But to me, it's like depending on your position, only thing that changes your strategy, right? So it's more about like how well do you know uh, certain dynamics and how to play the uh, certain strategies because whenever you're like, let's say you're this guy and you're a chip leader, it's quite easy for these two, I kind of think, to play because uh, they already know they need to be tight, right? Only mistakes they can kind of do is when they are going to uh, play too wide because you can punish them. So I think yeah. it's mostly about like, hey, what strategies am I good with in what situations? Because if you put this stack over here, now this guy gets to play very wide whenever you fold, right? And he needs to be very wary how he's going to play against you as well. How, what is his flatting ranges and stuff? Like, kind of like this guy. So to me, it's kind of like, because I don't really care which strategy I want to play. Unless, like, uh, I play too many tables that I actually would like to play over here. Just because it's very simple to play. There is, like, you don't really need to think if you're next to the chip leader, I kind of feel. Because you just play tight and wait. Mm-hmm. But in terms of EV, you play tight and you basically and you just like and you just like four bet if you get three bet basically or fold basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty well, straightforward. Yeah. Well, well, with sixty big blinds, it's a little bit different. You do get the flatting ranges yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, for for Felipe, yeah, but for Arto on twenty five here, it's gonna be pretty difficult to just yeah, apply doing any flatting. I actually, <laughs> it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, I think it's actually super easy to play these stacks if you kind of uh, yeah. study a little bit. It's very simple to play, but the EV is actually sure. like. People think EVs matter where you're sitting yourself. I don't think the EVs matter. It's all about your strategy and how well you can execute uh, depending on the other stack sizes where you're sitting rather than like, oh, I, I like your EV is whatever your stack is worth, right? Yeah. So, 
You're Which is worth a lot to start this FD. That is worth saying. I have a pretty huge lead. <laughs> like that's like it's gonna be a bit a big elephant in the room here. <laughs> on this FD. Uh, if you came into FD, what was your plan? You're just going to bully around, or you're gonna be like, oh fuck this, it's 1.5 mil uh, for first. I'm just gonna fall to dirt three handed. I, I, I was just gonna play. I was just gonna play what I've pretty close to like how I feel like it's just like a how I should play a chip lead opening range. I'm not gonna do anything too out of line. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like some of the guys at the FT do play a little bit wider than um, than ICM model would suggest with regards to preflop. So, and you'll see that a couple of times, especially with my lappy style. Um, mm -hmm. So I was going to be a bit aware of that, but for the most part, I was just going to play pretty close to what I thought a chart might do. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't going to deter too much away from it. You know, this is a high level FT where literally every single player was a reg, so. You can't, you know, you know, you should just be trying to stick to a solid baseline. I think for the most part. Yeah, I think there is some spots where you can go with like suboptimal strategies because the EVs will be running very small. Sure. But like for most part, you're supposed to be playing uh, correctly. It's good fold. I think you get to go to multi way very often here. This guy is opening super tight, or at least he should be. I would uh, also be. He actually, he had, he had, he had, he had pocket fives a sun, which I think is way too wide, actually, like significantly too wide. Yeah, but I uh, this the early position. I, I mean, I don't despise it, but I think it's just a bit much, actually. Um, yeah, I agree. I, also, it's like two point three x. It kind of says it doesn't really have a hand. Like, it kind of feels like it's going to be even tighter than maybe it should be because it's like I'm gonna call this guy off always, kind of size, right? Yeah. Because if he yeah, min races, sure. he can definitely start folding a little bit to this guy. But 2.3 becomes problematic. Yeah. I don't know if that was just a function of him opening into me, that he was just going for a bit bigger size, or what the yeah what the plan was. It was probably a mix of both, and like suggesting to the ABB, it's like, I'm not going to fold, yeah. Um, Over here, I, I like, like, you're not supposed to be going multiway because the opener's range should be tight, and this guy... Because I, this I, I don't know, the button's range is relatively snug as well here, like, um, you know. Hands like five six off are doing great, but Jack eight offsuit's like terrible, obviously. Yeah, um, offsuit hands in general, you need like connectors to do. Uh, continue here. Yeah. Not sure. Not sure. So you go for a call here. This is uh, very interesting. Is this like a bottom hand you would call? Uh, I would have called like five or suited six five suited. I'm pretty sure too. Would you call um, seven five suited? Eight six suited? Mm, gets close, I think. At the one gappers. Uh, I don't think the big blind's going to squeeze enough, so I might have entertained it. Uh, and I, I don't know if the big blind's going to choose the right hands to squeeze. It's kind of difficult for me to like speculate properly on that. But um, mm -hmm. so I think I would have played pretty liberally, and I thought this hand was pretty trivial, actually. Okay, so this this is actually. Wrong. This is actually a spot, even he opens a tight range, because this small stack, and you are so far apart from this guy, you're actually so, he should be fine, I would have to run it, but like, you should be fine to actually flat like 7-5 suited, 8-6 suited, like basically... Yeah, I, I, I think, I, think I would have definitely considered 7-5 suited in game, I might have folded, I might not have done, you know, but like, mm. these were pretty clear to me, for example, I would have gone down to like 5-4 suited for sure. Um, mm. sure. What's your thoughts on the flop? And I think this is actually... Uh, I think this is a spot where Malaka style has to be pretty careful. This is Malaka style IP. Um, I think he has to be pretty careful with his C-bet frequency and hand selection. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think this is a border I... where people make a lot of mistakes. Doesn't matter if you're mm -hmm. high stakes player or not. Would you have any leads here? Um, I don't think on the paired deuce I would have had, but like maybe if I was another low card instead of a deuce, I certainly would have considered it and probably employed some leading strategy here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... Um... Uh... Let me pull, pull you a sim. This is actually one sim I did run for this, so not too many of these. Oh, there was some out position leading? Uh, yeah, it? yeah. So, uh, just quickly, uh, let's go through the ranges. So, this is uh, your range, kind of. Made it a little bit tighter, a little questionable, whatever you're three betting, right? This looks, this, looks, this looks pretty close to how I would have played, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Like, you can make argument you're three betting sometimes, jacks, maybe you're flatting queens, yeah, yeah. So, like ace king, but like, for the most part, a fucking out. That's pretty good. Yeah. I opened a different one. And I, I would imagine this is like on the wider side, but I don't know, like, kind of what I was imagining. Yeah, this, I think this is realistic for the, for the villain. Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, I think realistically, this is a little, like, he should be a little bit tighter than this, but like, this is like what I think he would be opening, but realistically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
one thing uh, over here why I was asking what is going to, what's going on in your mind is what you already said is once you check imposition player actually you should be uh being very tight very very check happy yeah okay. and and the whole idea is one when imposition is so tight basically it's building a value betting range around ace queen plus right and there is no like other hands just won't qualify to go for three streets so, and you're playing a chip leader so because of that high frequency checks happen you do have uh, quads you're gonna have ace deuce ace queen yep. and this is basically a range that wants to get value from in position so you are supposed to be having actually a lead, uh, lead out range here and this actually happens quite often on a side boards or like in general and the whole point is uh this player just has to check back so often because if he has ace, he has to take streets out of the game. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So yeah, like so... they kind of become to get value for our like ace jack or whatever mm -hmm. against like pocket nines, pocket tens. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And this, uh, this is another one. Like this size is not not going to be a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really make too much logistical sense. Like, yeah, if, it, it's funny in game. Like, obviously, I didn't do anything with seven six here, but I would have been. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have played flop leads here, but I would have like played back against the sizing very aggressively. Like, we saw the hands that were leading, like threes, fours, fives. So, there were literally no chance I wasn't check raising those, or at least like doing some check call leading, or like you know, I was. I was going to be finding ways to like v pip lots and lots of hands against this size for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, that's a just because I'm going to overrealize EQ Rise, and like I feel like he's going to have too many of these broadways that don't really have too much incentive to bet because their removal isn't great, and you know there's there's so much checking that like you already I mentioned he needs to be doing. Um, I have all of these suited aces. I have yeah lots of various like holdings, you know, and I've rel relatively snug range that's kind of well constructed and defined. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. that is another thing when you don't have leads here, he's really like should be even tighter yeah. th than this exactly. one. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a strategy considering that I would be co constructing a leading range. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But actually, this whole line is very fun because, like, he's supposed to be bot botting here, right? So mm -hmm. he's botting, and you're just continuing basically flush throws and ace six. And yeah, and some of I, mean, I mean, players. that makes logistical sense here, too, actually, to yeah. be honest. Um... You do a little bit of mixing with pairs for the sake of your range, just because of like the equity shifts. So that's like that's something to always note in these spots. Like you will actually just mix a little bit of calls just for the sake of it. Like it's like zero EV, but it, yeah. it gains your range EV. Like when the equity shifts, like on a on an ace turn, you'll probably start leading. Uh, on flush completing turns, you'll probably start leading, right? And then those pairs will start bluffing. Um, so that's kind yep. of interesting. Sure. You you actually you're supposed to be bluffing some a six as well on two. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense to me too. Yeah, because I mean, like your range, your range is just so strong that continues that you need to start dip, dipping in that direction. You know. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So you default. I just saw this one and it felt very interesting. Because, yeah, that was a very interesting one. Be, because oh, I, I know, we have two interesting hands in a row then. <laughs> because for me it was like. I see, saw the spot. I'm like, there must be some leads here, and like nobody's leading, so I'm gonna run it. So you choose to jump. Well, here. They, well they're gonna, they're, they're gonna be leading now. Yeah, yeah, this is an interesting spot. Uh, what is your thoughts? Why, why, why are my, are why are we jamming here? Um, because the original raise is really handcuffed in what he can call within his opening range. He's gonna be having pretty tight, but so many of his hands still have to fold. <laughs> Um, how I saw it was like sevens should be pretty close pre-flop. So usually you go below like the bottom pair that opens pure, which I imagine in him, his spot should be about eight. Uh, sevens is probably zero EV. So how I do these spots is basically I would call ace eight suited through like ace queen suited or whatever maybe. Um, and then ace two for ace seven I would shove. Uh, I would free bet off suit ace x and suited king x, uh, especially with low cards, because he's not really going to be fighting my free bet. Um, and then I guess hands like Queen Jack suited might be okay to shove if he's not calling Ace Queen against the free bet jam covered by the chip leader with that much RP on himself. Um, I don't know. How do you? How would you see this situation? So, do we? I'm not a big fan of jamming in these type of spots. I do think uh, in equilibrium, I don't think you're supposed to be jamming at all. To be fair, but I do think uh, if you if you think he's opening like twenty percent over here, you probably find a jam. I just think this uh, opening range. It's probably capped to like fifteen percent. Wouldn't shock me to see like thirteen percent RFI just because of the stacks and because of that. It's like even if he calls you like uh, four percent of hands and you jam and he opens, uh, let's say twelve uh, percent, you're gonna get it, you're going to get called by this guy twenty five percent of the time, and these guys yeah. can also wake up. 
even though it doesn't happen sure. too often. So just because this range is uh, so tight, if he was over here or something, sure. But like I, but I can also see like you think you think the range is a little too tight. Yeah, I, I can yeah, yeah. Can that. But yeah. but I like, I can also see like some breaks will open too wide here, so the jamming would should be fine. Mm -hmm. Aces, of course. Aces. <laughs> They always have them. You were right. I mean, he was. I mean, it was. It was tight. You know, he was tight. I mean, you were right. Yeah, you just want the blocker. Yeah, right these, you've got to be careful in this spot because the big blinds for sure this too, and you can just kind of, <laughs> you can still really relatively wide against sweet right. So yeah, I, I just think you want that. Want to have a blocker hand. If you had like a yeah, six, yeah, no, that's that's a theme. That's a theme. Phoenix. A lot of the hands I get dealt, I think, over the next few orbits. Like uh, I'll get like hands that look pretty, like quite pretty, but like don't achieve, actually achieve anything as opens like nine five suited there or something. A lot of folds, eh? In it. This is a pretty interesting hand, actually. <coughs> What's your thoughts about opening this wide over here? Because uh, you're opening kind of a lot of short stacks. Do you think it's not, it might be too wide? I think I just want to get up to a frequency, and I think this probably just about qualifies. It's in my mind. Yeah, um, yeah. You would uh, fold ten seven suited, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I would fold ten seven. Yeah. yeah, I'd fold nine seven suited. I think this is just like on the line, basically. Don't think it flop matters too, too much. Uh, one thing. Uh, to say, whenever you're a big stack. I think often people don't understand uh, their own range because in ICM, like your big stack, you're under the gun. If you play by standard under the gun range, you're supposed to be kind of betting here always, right? But if you're now yes, thinking, uh, mm -hmm. if this you're is, yeah, I, I, I was I was going to bring up this point. I'm really glad you have. Uh, it's actually really important. It, yeah, because if you're under the gun and you're opening thirty percent, you should be thinking more about high check uh, cut off uh, play or ranges rather than this and like often because peak blind in the or in general ICM calling ranges are getting very tight you're not really supposed to be sea betting 100% most spots actually I do think a lot of people still do even like if it's a side board your range is 30% he's gonna have all, a lot of ASEX like you're not most likely not going to you you're not supposed to be sea betting 100 there are some spots obviously but like I do think this is like yeah. one of the concept people just missing because it's just like not thinking of their own range. Yeah, I, th I think it's really important, to be honest. Um, I think this board, as for what you've just said, because his defending range is so tight and I'm going to be opening lots of offsuit blocker hands too, like the ASEX offsuit is going to have pre pro you know, priority coming yeah, to block yeah. value. Um, I'd still be very wide with pairs and he's had just like some kind of 30% something range. Like, and, and, and the fact that the big blind range is so much tighter than Chip EV too, I think a lot of people forget that. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this board, and he's going to be incentivized to fast play at free SBR too. So it's a, a mix of all of that means I'm going to have, I think, pretty obvious hand classes that don't want, like range betting. This board will lose a lot of EV for me. I think. Um, I think it's important to be careful and pretty kind of aware. And I think I've got the kind of hand that's you know very much in the in that kind <laughs> yeah, of camp too. I like to bet on the turn. Uh, obviously, you you can check sometimes, but like. I, Basically, the check. He actually had king. He, he had he had king nine suited, which is shocking to me, actually. Um, because for one, he's rejoining. It's really high. Especially, yeah, you'd rather you'd almost rather have that hand than fucking a jack or even me. I mean, not maybe not a queen, but like <laughs> he's got some kind of redraw going on, you know, where I'm going to bluff very aggressively on the five straight. Well, well to and be, yeah, to be to be, f to be fair, I think you. You're basically just betting straights here. You're gonna have some Jack Nine and uh, Nine Eight suited over here, that and Queen Nine, I guess. But those are only suited hands. You're not going to value bet King Queen here, Ace Queen. You're gonna bet those quite a bit on the flop, or like it's very yep. unlikely. So I don't think it matters if he has King Queen or King Nine. King Nine is probably like the better combo because it's blocking two bears that you can actually have here. So it kind of feels like you he should be defending that one. Yeah, um, I think it's quite interesting too. Like I, I think the the bluffs to me aren't even that hard to find either. Um, I would just pull the pairs that with backdoor clubs that didn't quite like betting flop. You know, like seven sixes of a club hands like this. I think a lot of people would miss that. Like I would definitely throw those into check. Like six, hands like sixes and sevens on a flop without a club, I could just kind of bet fold and not really care. And even with a club, I can. It's like reasonable to do that, but. 
Um, they can also check and then actually they don't really they're not really going to show down to win much of the pot share, you know. But they can actually start offsetting for the times I've turned the ten, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of cool as well. Uh, A lot of Swedish so kings would pro probably would want to bet here. They're not just Swedish, but like this would probably love to bet here. Yeah, it should be pretty easy for me to find offsets like some kind of backdoor plus draw hand that didn't bet the flop or like the low pairs of a backdoor plus draw, lower pairs of a backdoor plus draw. But this is kind of like, oh, I'm full of shit type of... Uh, yeah. Like, when he has a6, it's supposed to be mostly jamming. There will be some uh, strong a6, uh, but like, it's just like, bullshit. <laughs> I don't even yeah, mind, yeah. mind to bet, even though, though, like, because you just have so much show no value. Yeah, I just have the best hand, yeah, and I'm just almost equity pushing. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure, I can see it. There you go, there's the shit, mate. There it is. <laughs> Ooh, what are you thinking about this one? Uh, it's really hard for Ido to do anything in the small blind. Yeah, this guy's just like uber cooked, you know. <laughs> and it's like I have a, I have hand classes like this that are kind of like annoying against a twelve BB stack, you know, like a lot of these linear kind of like offsuit hands. Like I'm like my raised range can extend a lot lower than this and have easier raise folds. But but and then uh, obviously easier raise calls. So it's kind of how I saw it. But mm, do you think uh, people are going to fold enough on from the small blind because like that is like uh, the yeah. whole, whole I, I I think I think that the idea. villain the villain the villain I think the villain in question does yeah because if he's going to like uh, snap off with ace jack and like pocket like sevens you probably not want to jam his jam here right no no absolutely not uh, um, but I am I am I was incredibly confident this villain would not be calling the sons okay uh, <laughs> what. I want to make one point here. If you had uh, 50 big blinds, I don't think you get to jam here. And the idea would be you just, the, the risk for you to lose over half your stack against this guy yeah. would be too great. So it, it is kind of like a little bit that you have such a big gap with uh, this guy. Yeah, for sure. I th that, yeah, and I completely agree. I wouldn't have played a uh, jam first in if I had mm -hmm. like, 50 big blinds. But like 100 against 30, it felt pretty right with the, the two tens and the 15, you know? To at least develop that. Ooh, this. What's your thoughts over here? Fine. Yeah, I don't yeah, mind. It's just a walk hand, right? And it's but, a pretty easy race fold against Budden, you know? But, uh, but yeah. I, I guess this, this is actually a point where what applies over here as well. If you had like 60 big blinds, you would be a little bit too close with this. You should probably be slightly yep. tighter, but because you're like, nobody, like you're d over 2x all the stacks, you do get to Yeah, actually they, they double free expand. me and they're still behind me. Like, mm. yeah, like it's kind of massive. Well, like often people are like, oh, I'm, I'm a big stack and they don't think it matters, but it does matter like how much you cover all the guys. Like if you have- Absolutely, if you cover because they just face greater risk premium effects um, the further they are behind you, you know? Because like, mm -hmm. it's just like a big issue to bust to you. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about freeze here? I wasn't sure. I, I mean, deuces is a clay fold for me. And I think even freeze here, like the 14 in the big line, the 10 cut off, I was like, I think it's okay to just, just, just like, and just focus on blockers, to be honest. So, so typically how I'm looking at this uh, small pairs in this type of spot is like, if. If the big stack was on the big blind, I would be more happy because I would play uh, against uh, a uh, big, uh, big stack. But over here, yeah, sure, he's going to have some type of a calling range. But for the most part, he's going to play pretty straight forward. And it's like, you're not going to go ahead and start uh, flopping sets and stuff. Uh, like, you're just not going to see a flop that often. So, like, once that you're not going to see flop very often, then like those small bears are like, would you open deuce three o if you're just stealing, right? Like no, because yeah. it's shit. So I, I kind of like it, but yeah, if, if uh, big stack was here and like short is maybe over here, I, I don't mind to open here. Yeah, I think it's really important that you just brought that stuff up, right? Because like the difference between the king gate off and the freeze is massive, right? Some people probably do that the other way around, but I think it's really important for my EV that I take the king gate and not the freeze. Yeah, like, yeah. Just that to scenario. <laughs> what are you thinking about uh, here? Uh, just RFI 100 and raise fall bottom. Yeah. 15% raise call top 15% and shove the rest, really. That's how I play this one, I think. Yeah, I think uh, this one should be mixing to not only. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think, I mean, as long as you are RFI somewhere, this, I think the EV for jamming and raising this seems yeah. similar. 
I mean, this guy, this guy, I mean, Sergio here is in a really tough spot with me into him blind v blind now. Like, there's a guy on eight and two on ten, you know? <laughs> like, it's, mm. it's really rough. Uh, He's really feeling the pain a little bit. This sort of a guy that feels like you're pushing it a little bit. So, there is. Yeah, one... I think it's on the borderline. Yeah. So, so there is one, one thing. Even if you're a big stack, it is very difficult to see any solution that allows you to open more than 55% on any position besides small blind. It does happen in like yeah. some very crazy ICM spots, but mostly you should be capped to 55%. I think like in general thinking, there are some expe uh, expectations, expectations, <laughs> uh, uh, some spots where you do get to expand over over that, but like typically you're just not supposed to be opening over fifty five, and I do think this is kind of getting into that area. This but... is on the this is right on the line. Like, this was on the line for the yeah. game. I was like, you know, I could have gone either way with this one. I think anything slightly better than this clear open, anything worse clear fold. You know? What's your thoughts over here? Um, Malaka's still defense two wide pre flop, so he's gonna have more off suit stuff than he should here. Um, that's something to know. That's just something from all my observations. I've played against him so many times. I have like so many thousand hands against him, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> read I have. But um, also, like, there's not really much check raising he can do, and he's going to have to overfold his MDF with like, you know, overcard, undercard, backdoor hands. Like, it's kind of tough to con like. Some of them I actually be supposed to continue even via calling, just because of how wide I am, and like just having check with he has my against my range. He only needs seventeen percent. Even like, you know, if you add in some RP, it's still like going to be. He doesn't need tons. So like, I have equity, but. I feel like, you know, I could just kind of get away with murder here, but like, I don't know if you see it the same way. It's okay. like a dangler on the board. Okay, so if he's defending wider than he should, I, th I think like, so the pre-flop idea for you should be, you get to open 55 because people are fo uh, being playing very straightforward, so to speak, and the, they are respecting the uh, risk premium on their stacks. If he's over defending, I think you should be uh, tightening up uh, preflop a little bit in general because you you only get to open because they are supposed to be folding. If they don't fold, it doesn't really uh, like you you can't really open that this wide. I guess you can make only only point would be like if they don't drape at you too much, you're still gonna see a flop and get equity realization. So by that, it's that's, like... That's the way I view, I view it too, because I don't think Malak, I think his free bet frequency here is gonna be obviously tiny. Um, so yeah, you, one important I, I think you can even make an argument he's not even supposed to have a three bet here, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, he probably should because you're opening so wide, but like... Uh, if yeah, he's... he should He should probably have a very large free bet that happens incredibly infrequently. That's probably how yeah. I would play this spot. So on the flop, whenever somebody is uh, defending too much, uh your strategy would actually become to size up here you want to move tutors but uh in some cases over yeah I, I, I could i could I, yeah i could see that yeah and, and the whole... hands kind of really nice for that too sure. it, yeah uh because your range is so wide uh unless you know he's going to overfall to bigger sizes i think you don't want to have a checking range but i i would imagine you if he defended properly preflop you're supposed to be having quite a lot of checks here because your range is quite wide from yeah i don't remember what he had but it was something that was probably not a defend <laughs> I <don't remember laughs> and, and, and like you know that like the hands like the jack five suited and stuff like they might even need to be like the same like with the back door like they probably need to still maybe consider ways to find uh defending against my b25 right even with the risk premium because i just have actually a lot of equity against such a wide range <laughs> yeah. close one face x off king x off and stuff you know yeah, yeah. Um, one thing one thing to mention because he's like a very big stack as well even though there is risk premium if you think about the post flop lines you're actually not going to get it in like for the most part there is no line where you're going to get in because you're not going to have hands that will want to get it in too often either so yeah for sure. so, so it's not like he, the risk like actually like post flop doesn't really have risk premium so to speak but like it's not going to be like you're going to play a very massive bots very often actually or at least it shouldn't really happen yeah and i i think what a lot of people miss is because he's not going to be check raising much at all like very 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 infrequently like he actually makes he has to make some pretty liberal check calls on the flop because his range can support it you know um and that's mm -hmm. kind of important to me as well i think I like it. You can yeah, probably I mean, jam sometimes. You know, but... Maybe, yeah, yeah, even this, yeah, jam, jamming this hand seems fine too, for sure. Um, yeah. 
What's your thoughts over here? Basically, it's bold rebat. Um, I'm just gonna be very. St- I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna defend like some decent looking hands for sure, like the suited gappers, uh, I suited hands, and like even pairs. I'm still gonna be very very def- uh, call happy with because I just you know like the risk premium on me losing twenty blinds isn't that <laughs> isn't that important, so I could actually go a little closer to just taking my odds, you know. But mm-hmm. uh, Jack ten offsuit, I didn't really feel like was <laughs> was in the realm of. Yeah, you're not supposed to be defended here. Yeah, but like, um, if you, but, but you, I could defend hands. I can, I can call this free bet for sure. Like this, like. Oh, you're like, supposed to like the the way equilibrium would work is probably you're supposed to be opening about forty percent here and just choosing such a small sizing. So you're actually supposed to be because you ha- you're in position. You're probably supposed to be defending half of your range. So you're supposed to be actually yep. defending about twenty percent hands. Which check then is not going to be in, but it's going to be somewhat close. Uh, it's got, there's going already. to be like suit, like king gate suited and stuff, right? It's really important not to fold, right? Like, and that's kind yeah, of a yeah, important yeah. concept. Right? Yeah, you're mostly folding just off suit hands, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, I would. I mean, suited hands, I would, I would be seeing free here for sure. <laughs> that's that's for definite. This is another spot. I don't think you get the range bet. Again, your range is super sure. wide. I actually don't like my turn play here much. I think I went too big. Oof. I like betting, but I went too big. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you get to like size up here. To be fair, like you can make. Yeah, I, I, I think I think I just miscalcul. I just I just misplayed this turn sizing. Mm, so in ICM, you don't really get to like size up much. Like it, even though it's just two dirts, it's just like you can you can make argument of you want to build like a flush flush and. Uh, Basically, bet flushes to this size and like this, but like ASEX kind of never, I would say. Also, I, I don't yeah, even think you're sure. going to have a best ASEX Espe- especially here. Especially without the Ace of Hearts. I, I, I should have the Ace of Hearts if I was ever going to do this. Yeah. I, yeah, I, don't, I didn't like my playing game. I should have just got, like, if I was going to bet, like, I think betting, like, 25, going B25, B33 seems totally fine there, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you bet small, I, I don't mind that, but I don't really mind the yeah. check, check yeah, back I, on I, the I, I, I did, Yeah, check, check as well, check as well, and then just play calls with it, for sure. The cheeky yeah. jacks, yeah, eh? Line seems... Yeah, his line seems okay, for sure. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I definitely just missized the turn there, and I wasn't really happy with that, to be fair. What are you thinking over here, folding ace nine out? Uh, so I would do a lot of squeezing here to punish, like, like given the, the two BB and the two twenties. But like the nines, just like terrible against the, <laughs> against the ranges. That's kind of my thinking, and I don't know. Uh, again, like these kind of high card offsuit hands, just like are so crushed against like tight ranges here. Like these guys are gonna be so careful playing into my stack with this two BB lingering. Mm-hmm. Um, and the two twenties, like both of them are ahead of everyone else at the table, but are still way behind me, you know. Mm. Uh, so, so I'm pretty selective with with hands here. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to be defending this. To be fair, uh, and your squeezing range would probably doesn't like a nine, and you're supposed to be. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that too. I thought about that in game. I, I really don't like the nine. It's a bad idea for the using this as a squeeze. Yeah, it's just about the about this guy's. Uh, fl- He's probably planning some 9x, so you don't really want to block those. So if you had ace 5 oh, that makes more sense. But all in all... Yeah, I think a hand like, a hand like ace 5 off, I would have definitely entertained squeezing. For sure. mm-hmm. But but the way you come up with the squeezing range over here is kind of interesting as well. You're supposed to be squeezing whatever blocks top of this player's range. So if he's planning queens here, you're supposed to be uh, squeezing sweet queens. If he's, queens, yeah. if he's uh, flatting kings here, you're supposed to be uh, squeezing uh, Swede King X as a bluffs here. Yeah. And the ace X obviously does make sense as well, but like it's very heavily towards what, what is he flatting because uh, his range is th- uh, tighter, right? Yeah, I had like queen four suited is like kind of like seems like a perfect kind of squeezing mm-hmm. candidate here. Uh, also, uh, I would say queen jack uh, makes a lot of sense as well because you're blocking yeah. queens and jacks for both players who they might sure. call or like try to run it with those. So, also yeah. blocking ace queen is amazing uh, against this guy. But I think it's an important preflop fault, like with my particular combo. I think it was important to point that out. Yeah, I'm just not doing well against these strangers. Yeah, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is. <laughs> He had a he had four of a kind. 
I was considering bluffing River, but I was just like, how is he? Like, what the fuck does he have? <laughs> I considered bluffing River. I was like, I thought about it. I, I, I went into the bank on the river. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> Should I just bet you first? Like, <laughs> Great, I didn't really know what was going on. Good at winning flips. What can I say? Kind of interesting spot here, though, uh, in terms of like how I play the 4BB. Uh, I think you always want the goal here, to be fair. Yeah, um, I think full deuce is still right, and like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Well, Falls, Falls is just too. Falls is doing too well against the four. I might actually go with threes as well. <laughs> yeah, I think threes is close. Uh, Falls is the first like easy pair. One thing to say is supposed to be actually jamming somewhat wide. And I kind of feel like whenever people are down to like three, four big coins, they might actually be way too tight because like. Yeah. I don't know. They, no, they just wait around hoping small blind busts or something. So, for sure. Yeah. Dream. Oh, this hand is. Uh, I think this is a very lot. interesting. Would you see bet range here? Kind of feels like the same idea. Your opening range is so wide. You're not supposed to really. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have seen bet range. No. Mm -hmm. But I still think small sizing makes some sense for sure. On this deck. This gets this gets really hairy. Let's let's put it that way. So, what are your, what are your thoughts on flop? Did you? Uh, I don't know if you ran the simplest one. This is a really. I no, actually I looked not. at this hand afterwards. This one's really interesting to me. I had some pretty important ideas that I was thinking about in game. Um, so 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 he, so his uh, check raising range is uh, two pairs plus. Uh, I guess says queen might be in there as well. But other than that, it's basically two bears plus, plus uh, type of range with the gut shots, obviously. So, yeah. so I, I think you get to fold any gut shot. Uh, probably some ace king with a backdoor flash throw, backdoor straight throw is decent defend. Uh, I don't think yeah, you get to sure. three three bet this though, because like if he's, no. you're just. Basically, your aces will won't beat value, and they beat bluff, so it just doesn't make any sense. The, the equity against this continues when I click. It's just not, yeah, it falls off quite a lot over the money. Yeah, I think I would uh, just like play as a call here with my range. To be fair, I think I would even have a. I think that's reasonable. I have so many range. hands that still want to just take the price, you know. Yeah, them. exactly. Like only hand really wants to go is like like eights, nines, and jack ten, right? Like other than that, you're just like not happy to get it in. I guess pocket yeah, wins, so the, but the, like... same, the same I saw in this hand was like he's actually meant to be really careful check raising flop even with two pairs, even straights are mixing. Yeah. Because the board actually shifts so much and like the risk premium that he's feeling against my stack is so high that there's so many of his hands actually really struggle to play for it all on like a lot of runouts, like you know, four straights, bad boards, like so, so you know, various hand classes mm -hmm. shift a lot in equity depending on those on those on those changes. So something to really important to bear in mind here, I think. Yeah, like uh, his range is mind. Well, it's already obvious in the sense of it doesn't really have too many value, so... And those wants to split the calls as well, so it's kind of wrecked here. He's going for it, Vince. Back and off. This is all... Aye, 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 aye. This is all about who you're playing against, I think, in the likes. Yeah, absolutely. Like it all comes kind of down like uh, will he find like correct frequency like typically how I'm thinking about it. If I get on the river, my thinking is did he is he barrel happy guy or like very happy to blast it off? And did, is it possible? Is it likely he found bluffed on the flop? Because if he's barrel happy and he finds bluffs, it is actually likely he might even over bluff this type of runouts. Because I, there is I, a I, lot that's of exactly that's exactly what I thought was happening actually. When I, I thought about it for a minute, then I arrived at that conclusion actually. That was like where I actually ended up leaning. And you can see it with his hand actually. Yeah, uh, his hand actually should basically never bluff river. He actually has pot share. Yeah, like um, like it kind of feels like if he does that, it's is it's probably not like giving up, right? Like Yes, exactly. If it, it feels like it's it's so hard to control regulate frequencies here because his two pairs want to check turn a bunch too and like some of my like no equity hands about you know play with the flop start bluffing like um he has to watch his frequency on basically every single street but it's really easy to just peel something especially if you're not mixing, yeah exactly right? like frequencies are super super important here 
Yeah, and, um, it, and, I actually, and, I, and I even figured on the river, I was like, even it's 10x, uh, it's 10 seed, 6 suited, jack 6 suited, I actually arrived at those combos, like when I was thinking the game, I was like, they might just be overcooking it too, and then I was like, okay, I'll call fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I saw that, it felt pretty good, you know, I was like, yeah, okay, he's definitely overcooking this, so would have definitely been a mistake to fall against this particular player, and I kind of figured that in game. As you said, he's very villain dependent, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing is, like, it is kind of died to uh, that he's supposed to be very tight with these check raises in general as to in terms yeah. of value because w once that is true it's like it's not that difficult to find a 10 or a jack here to go for a check yeah. raise right so if you start counting all of that in that you think this is just like a snap unless you know or like you think your opponent is just like not somebody who's capable of barreling in that case i think it happens that often that you encounter such players though there are a few yeah. There are a few. Uh, no, 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 yeah, there are a few, but the GG 10k not usually the battlefield for that, you know. <laughs> but, you know? Yeah. This is fine. Yeah, and now now it's worth saying that we have just like a joke of a lead right now. Like this is this is really problematic for these other guys right now. <laughs> for sure, after like mm -hmm. taking that pot down. What's your thinking over here? Um, I wouldn't be using suited aces. I kind of just too good, so I just go down to off suited aces, like suited low suited kings. Um, yeah. I can free that call pretty liberally for value. That's an important thing to mention as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not like super bowler free betting at all. Like I can free bet and call off pretty happily with like nines and shit, you know. Um, yeah. With my stack, because I'm just not feeling enough risk premium. It doesn't. It doesn't cost me much to lose twenty blinds, basically. The guy also tanked for opening, which I thought might have been a tell, and he had ace nine off, so maybe I actually picked up something that maybe I didn't, you know. Okay. <laughs> but also, the, I mean, the hand class is also just like the one that makes sense, right? As well, the ace four off anyway. Yeah, you off to this is like solver loves those. Oh, they're, 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 they're the go tos, right? That for sure, anyway. So. And what about this one? Uh, Malacca just has to be just can't really call off uh, in a small blind. It's like brutal for him. And then, like, I just have a class of hands like this that kind of do okay ish when like I have a 19 or 18 calls. Hmm. Um, I do think this is another spot where like. It would never happen if you had like 80 big blinds, probably, but like yeah. it could be yeah. happening. But, but, like... but, but, but 143 is like pretty, mm -hmm. pretty but, fucking large. But, yeah. but one thing I would say is like, I do think I often would uh, up to. Because I would, would not, first of all, I would not be sure you'd even have a jabbing range here. And because of that, even if it is a suboptimal strategy, so to speak, you will be fine. To error fine on all in with your range here and not have any jams because like sure. only thing that really happens if you do that is like maybe you get you're not supposed to be opening 50 percent here now it's like 45 or something yeah you you, 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 you're bottom. gonna drop a few of the bottoms yeah, yeah so yeah. so they so you're just not going to overfall to three bets but like uh yeah in general I, i'm not like that big of a fan of this uh, in high stakes, I don't really mind it that much, I guess, because like people actually know they can call. If you do this in like yeah, especially the the small blind is Malacca, and I'm pretty sure he knows like on pairs like, mm -hmm. like pretty hard. Yeah, and yeah, if so. you do this in like one on nine, then this guy calls you with oh, like yeah, pocket sevens. I would, I would never, I would never, <laughs> I would never, I would never ever do this in a one on nine. My yeah. goodness! If for anyone watching, like do not do not try. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a very calculated move. This was actually one of the hands that does shove if you play like the shoving strategy. I did look at this hand actually. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But 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 so, yeah, like but this is all like, but, like, I, like as soon as playing he... RFI only and dropping like a few of the sent sent opens is like totally fine too. I think you know. It's, like, yeah. It depends on how you want to play it, really. Yeah, but it is like if and this guy is calling too wide, I think it's, you you already read. Yes, correct, correct. If it, if that was a recreational in the small blind, I would never ever play a jam strategy. Yeah. Sure. You know, these guys always just have the nuts when I show up. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I, I told you two times time. I don't like the chairman. and you ran eight into aces and kings, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I, how was I live on the turn? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I had hope, I had hope. I think this is too Would it be wide. my king for too, too wide? Yeah, yeah, I figured it might be. Like, as I said before, it's very difficult to go over, like, 55. In general, 50, yeah. 55, it's just, like... It's just pushing it. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think I pushed it. Too also, much. another thing is like, if it was a big, this guy was on a big blind, I think I would mind it less. But like, you're a, against another. Yeah, big we're also stack. deep against. He's yeah. supposed to be actually play back against you quite a bit here. Take a flop and like, it just feels messy. Yeah, a little, a little too much though. I guess you just isolate. Yeah, could I, could, could, yes, iso sometimes. Check sometimes. 
Same on the this flop. Board, I stab. Uh, I would. I would bet this flop very high frequency. I think, just given the scenario, I think I just get to bet this board way more than even Nash. That would be my guess. I actually uh, disagree. I uh, uh, the idea is because he doesn't want to to build the bot. He's supposed to be playing more protected range, so to speak. And because of that reason, I kind of feel like you're actually supposed to be a baron, uh, betting this a little bit less. Because he's supposed to be kind of protected. If he has, like, like something decent, like, let's say he had, uh, like, Queen New Sweden. Doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. you, like, maybe he wants to bet sometimes, uh, or, like, uh, 3x. But because it's, like, oh, I'll get the ship leader. I do kind of think, like, because of ICM, the smaller stacks always uh, kind of want to, so to speak, bot control, even though it's out of position. It's not easy. Oh, yeah, he, he, he could be just range checking flop and like, lifting yeah, range. Yeah, exactly. Right? Or he could just have 100% of his yeah, range. Yeah, and that prevents... Think that, like, he, he has to, I think he has to overfold some of like the, the, the higher middling cards, so, which is quite nice. So, 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 so what do you mean by overfolding, though? You said it before as well. So, so Hans, like, 10-9 offsuit with a club are, like, trivial continues for chips, but, like, start to suffer immediately here, I think. Um, I might be wrong, but so 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 I think I think uh, if you look at ICM sims, often you see so to speak overfolding actually happening because uh, a lot of hands that you have uh, good equity in cheap PV because in cheap PV you're betting a little bit more linearly so to speak for value. You just and you you add in that you're gonna need a little bit more equity. It's just like like you're still going to like. Uh, Basically, you are gonna just end up with a lot of uh, weak preflop hands from preflop, so you get to fold these on the flop a little more. But I don't think this is going to be a game, especially if you're going to bet more aggressively here. Like it's still going to have to defend here uh, every now and then here. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he. I mean, like I was. I. But I'm challenging him to do that as well. That's what. Ah, that's that's true. But one thing to say is like it is very nice to like you can defend one street is he capable of defending second street right yes yeah that, that's it like recognizing that his ace high and his strong like, even like king queen and stuff is like pretty mm -hmm. high in his check hold range here you know because he like we talk about the way over there's so much of this jack 10 10 9 1 club hands backdoor diamonds like there's so many of these hands that like hands like you know your ace highs and your best king high actually are still pretty strong <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah this makes a lot of sense I don't even mind to like go even bigger here every now and then. I think he's like connecting. I think I, I think I, I think I just played. I think I just played like this kind of two thirds catch all size where I can bet relatively thin on the second three and then mm. check back river. Um, I think it's like reasonable. I like uh, it. But yeah, I, I I I agree that I don't mind the uh, the sure bigger size. I think it's really important on these flops, not just B25, his defending range is pretty strong and suited base. So like put it like the B40 just like starts to immediately apply pressure to that. Mm. Over here, by the way, yeah. in position player is supposed to find MDF defense. Like close to Oh absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um but that, it's, that it's easier to, to do that against 25% than against 40%. People might start to overfold a little bit against like the 40 to 50% here, I think. Mm -hmm. Um we, we, but, but like you're saying it's still very true that he needs to find defense. So. Um yeah, this is too loose. <laughs> I can't help myself, bro. Sorry. But it's this. Like <laughs> <laughs> claws. Actually, uh, small blind had king queen suited here. What do you think about king queen suited? Perfect play. Best probably candidate to squid. Like small blind is not supposed to have basically calls here. You can like your bears are going to mix here. There will be a couple of hands that like oh. uh, will be in into a calling range, but he's supposed to be squeezing and basically folding. And this yeah. guy is going to have I mean, have I, kings I, I and I was going to, uh... sorry, go ahead. So this guy is going to have a kings and queens in calling range. So king queen is blocking yeah. literally this uh, yeah. this top range. So I think this is like perfect time to squeeze here. I like. It. I was just wondering about all in ideas versus non all in ideas more so than the obviously King Glee suit, I think it's like premium squeezing candidate. Mm -hmm. But like I kind of like just playing non all in, but like there might be some ideas here of like just playing shoves too. Well, um, you... opening ranges so wide. And like even and he forces buttons to make a lot of folds for like pretty good hands. Yeah, I, I guess uh, if you have Ace King, you will jam maybe Ace Queen. Mm -hmm. You're actually not yeah, that I was just happy curious to, about that, really. To, to... 
You don't really have that much, like, how did you really want to jam me here, right? In general, you're, like, pretty tight here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just curious. Um, I, I would... find that Aces here, shockingly. I mean, I, I know it's really, it's really shockingly how Aces here, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he just... <laughs> yeah. Good hand, right? Oh, sure, sure. I have to be a little bit careful into Ido, just like, this is a spot where I can't go quite as ham as I was before. Like, I, he's still experiencing a lot of ICM, but he is, like, last by, like... Yeah, I don't even might, might do have a limping range here, to be fair. You're playing against the yeah. shorter stack, so... I don't mind yeah. the champ, I yeah, don't I mind 3x, awesome. does 3 matter. I, I think I, I, anything really goes as long as he does yeah. so. This probably is slightly... Might be it's slightly close, it's close. pushing. Yeah, it's it's close. This is this is on the line for me here. Sure. I think this, this is, is actually a pretty well hand. This is one of the board I think you get to see bit your range here. Mm -hmm. Again, you're just opening so wide. Your range is just so weak into ranges that should be tighter. But but I guess if you think he's over folding again, if you if he's over folding, you're just supposed to be sizing up a lot more. Ooh, you're not running it, huh? I think it, over here it so makes... I, uh, I, would, I would just... I would have seen that more than you were talking. I would have probably not found in the flop check, so I was just going to be running the queen free suited of hearts and, like, five, six of hearts. And um, and also, if I'm seabetting more than I should be, like, I've got to find a lot more checks. And, like, I just, like, immediately take preference. Like, when I just have, like, an immediate bad card at the six of clubs, I'm okay to just, like, play it as a knuckle. Mm, like, uh, I, because your range is so wide and you're probably overly seabet happy here, don't think like you you do want to have a check checking range here most likely, so I don't really want yep. to just give this one up. Yeah, that's that's also yeah, like I said, like as well. Like I'm one of those guys I look at the six of clubs and know it's terrible on the turn. And then like but like if I've got jack five of hearts here, I'm like loving barreling, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's kind of, but that's that's what I, that's how I approach the spot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh this was interesting on River. Like this is a big old bet from a uh, Malacca style <laughs> given his stack. Like yeah, I, uh, I, I'm trying to figure out what can he like. That is one thing with with Rex is like, it is debatable if he's supposed to be choosing this size with any a sex, right? Yeah, it's it's very it's getting a bit thin. That's sure. Yeah, maybe <laughs> like ace jack ace ten, you can maybe start yeah. arguing, but like rest of that, it's. I mean, I, I, he probably and he needs to probably have the diamond too, like the ten of diamonds. Yeah, yeah diamond, exactly. So like, that's really important. Yeah. So it's kind of like this is getting very polarized. I would I would have gone all in here with a lot of blocker hands. Like I'd have just gone all in a lot here. If I just had anything that blocked a flush, I was probably just gonna go all in, like very aggressively, and just be like, I'm just gonna punish the sizing of my risk rewards like way more way better than it should be. To be honest, <laughs> he's probably overvaluing one pair. He actually had five four off, which is a very wide flop uh, pre flop defend. Uh I'm actually thinking, what about like, yeah, you just don't have a blocker. I, I think if you had a four of diamond here, that would be the fucking nuts. Yeah, I, absolutely. L uh, like, but even then, but I mean, like, by the tens and jacks of a diamond, I probably would have just fucking put it in as well. Like, mm. that'd be like, right, good luck. But, but, because once you have four of diamond, you're, this player you're basically does, doesn't media. have any, any flushes yeah, anymore. Flush. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Like, it does have few, but like, basically doesn't really have it. I'm just thinking, like, could you just go with like small check raise here or a small raise? Yeah, here? I have like a two sizing strategy. Yeah, it's kind of weird against his sizing because against a block size, you could definitely play like way more aggressively around blocking a two pair, right? And then this hand becomes more entertaining. Um, I just wasn't sure against his sizing, you know? Because um, he should be playing block a lot here because then he can probably value better king for a block, you know, still. Mm -hmm. So it's oh. like. I do think one thing is very interesting to point out here. It is very difficult to find bluffs and your opponent needs to, like, obviously he will find bluffs because he understands his range. But because on the, mm -hmm. once you bet the flop, his def defending range is a size, jack 10, queen jack type of uh, range, yep. 4x. That's basically it and some flush draws, right? So on the river... So he, so he, has, he has to bluff 4x, yeah. 4x and missed uh, clubs because he doesn't really have anything. Uh, I would even uh, argue he might not three, have to... Threes, threes, threes and deuces, maybe even fives after bluff, probably. Yeah, yeah. Like, threes, deuces for sure, four X. Yeah, or uh, some nine X, like, maybe. Yeah, even nine X is on the line, yeah. But, but, but like, but one thing is, like, he's, he's not supposed to have too much value, so it's, like, can't bluff everything. Yeah, I was, I was, I was very curious in this spot. Like, I was, like, I, I gave him a bit of a not sure if, you know? 
Okay. Yeah, it, it is kind of. Team... I'll, I'll give. I'll give. I'll give you. I'll give you credit for going for a fin ace eight of clubs for you, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, you know. it, <laughs> it does feel like it might get. It's just like. His bet size might get a little bit too. Tar thin he's he's, he's targeting value. a fold rather than thinking about his value. Yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe. But as yeah. but uh, as soon as he's gonna have ace ten, ace jack o, maybe even ace eight o, you fuck like you're probably not supposed to be oh, like, like clicking any like calling buttons. And, 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 Mal and, Mal and Malaka and Malaka loves a little value bet, so I uh, <laughs> okay. You win, sir. Well, we're down to four very quickly, by the way. That's really worth pointing out. <laughs> uh, uh, I think this is another spot. One thing, as I told you before, you're not supposed to be C betting 100%. This is going to be kind of true in these type of spots, probably in, for him as well. It's like high frequency C bet, but it's typically in position play. Like, if you look, run a lot of aggregated final labor reports, it's just not going to be much of a thing to see bet 100% uh, in a lot of boards. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, you can't defend this one, but uh, something do you think of... Uh, if you think somebody is over C betting, you can start uh, taking aggressive lines against them because they're... Oh, hands like 5-4 suited, 7-5 suited, 8-7 suited. I'm going after this guy for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, anything wrapped around the 6 particularly, like a 6 and under card is really, really nice to use. Uh, so you're gonna have a folding rate? Like uh, over here, you can have actually an Olympic strategy as well. Race, not yeah, only. Yeah, I think I'm just respecting the fact that Malacca's probably a little gets after it a little bit more than most. So I thought folding like bottom fucking five percent mm -hmm. as well. It's <laughs> so fine. Be okay. It's not hundred percent probably to play. Yeah, this is probably a little bit thin, but it's close. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's probably about right. It's like bottom suit jack. Yeah, it's probably about there, right? So. Yeah. Does look like you really like to re uh, open though. <laughs> I mean, you gotta you gotta enjoy the stack size in the moment, you know. It's on, it's on stream, isn't it? You gotta... <laughs> uh, over here, I, I I think you want to guide the size up, and you, you you're sure. just gonna have a lot of like random shit in general. And yeah, and, and the size up's quite nice with this hand because I can make a lot of better hands fold, <laughs> and I've got some kind of removal to some top. And mm. hands, yeah. I don't mind this more, but I probably, like... want to be, I probably probably got a bit lazy playing B twenty five jack here. To be honest, I think. Um, you want to guess what he had in this hand? It's kind of I thought it was crazy. I don't know if you saw. No, I don't. I, didn't, I, didn't I, think I, I would be surprised anybody. if you can get his hand. I would be surprised if you can guess his hand. Okay, if you say like that, I'm gonna think of something crazy. So you bet small. Yeah, well, it, it, was just, it was mind blowing to me actually. So five, five dreams. It's, it's, it's a hand I could have made fold probably. Yeah, it's probably worth saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, okay, yeah, I'm like. <laughs> but like his whole line doesn't make any sense to be honest. I get I guess he's repping yeah. an ace, right? So he, he's repping yeah. an ace. So where does the bluffs come from? Three, four, like it must be a five X or two sex, right? Yeah, and I was also just like, is he is he he, he probably still needs to defend against my strategy, like still the Jack Eight suited of the world, right? I can't really see them folding flop really. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Too, like yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff like that. Was what I was thinking too. I mean, if he's finding the correct flop defend, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe he's over adjusting, maybe he isn't. Uh, he had nines of a heart, which I thought was absolutely fucking crazy. <laughs> Why? I think it's just. I think his hands just like too strong. It has too much pot share. I think. I I kind of get it with like lower pairs, but I think that's just like too much. Yeah, he, yeah, like nines. Like he's gonna have two six five x as you said like jack yeah. eight uh, jack nine Even like that pocket book. fours or like sixes or something that would actually start to make sense for me but like yeah yeah nines is um, like I even like I like even it, like yeah. yeah he's overdoing it I think it's fine it's like you said I, it's like you said I can have limps right and also I, I'm gonna be pretty like and then like on on these like a side boards I think it's important not to just start fucking randomly throwing out bets because I am gonna be rarifying a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you, um, but your your strategy should still mainly probably be the three x. Like if you allow yeah. solver to use two point five x, wouldn't shock me to be like raise your range to two point five x. But people don't really sure. like 
I don't. I'm not a big fan of that strategy. I would rather have limps. And no, like and, and Malaka's not the not the guy to be running that strategy on either. I think mm -hmm. uh, you you might be opening the door for some issues. He had Ace Two here, which was like pretty standard, I think. Um, it's probably a little bit maybe too wide, but like six yeah, four. Yeah, you can flat very wide here. I, I would flat very wide here. Yeah, six four probably wants to flat, so six three is gonna be. Close. Yeah, yeah. You, I can, I could take the piss here with flatting. Because I'm not, I'm not free betting to get it in very much, you know. So like, I could just like then I have a pretty strong fighting range. I can call the big blind, mm -hmm. and I could just fight a lot of hands here. Like ten seven suited is like trivial here, but people might miss them. You know, I think that's kind of important. Mm -hmm. um, Man, this is a, every every single final table I'm uh, reviewing, I kind of feel like whenever there is a fucking flop, there is in position C bet. I don't know why, but like <laughs> this is just like like it must be over the time. Let's build a pot, brother. Let's build a pot. I mean, like, come on. Let's, let's learn, learn to check. Um, so I, guys. I, I, I span I span, I span a lot of turn lead here against this strategy, but like Malaka, like I didn't really he didn't really strike me as a guy I wanted to lead this particular combo against because it probably starts to have regret. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. I think you're gonna have leads, but it's gonna cut. It's not like you're going to have uh, have to lead this. Like it is one hundred percent. This hand doesn't. This hand doesn't do that much for me in leading as well. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, kind of problems as well. Yeah. Like on, only only problem is if he's c betting like his range and like let's say you assume he's under bluffing the turn or under barreling, you would like to lead yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, that was that was kind of my approach in game, but then this hand was like it wasn't. I wasn't really vibing with it much, you know. But I was what what I do in game here is I just like float flop very wide, and then um, yeah, then I would you know have lots of hands to lead as well, outside of just like ten nines. I think <clears throat> he's putting a lot of chips into the middle. By the way, it's worth noting. Like he's like he's got to be pretty fucking thin here for value. Like he's like he's got to be very careful. Sorry, with value. Mm. Um, you know, he's built quite a significant pot. So it, it, I really don't like my nine here for calling. This must be like... And he's, not, and, he's, and he's not value betting a 10, so like I just really don't like my nine, basically. That's how I saw this spot. Yeah, it's... it's uh, like, so, so one thing to, like you obviously understand is like you don't really have a king here. So you are at at top of your range. And if you know that, you already know like you're supposed to be calling here with this one. Like, sure, you can make argument like you want him to have nine and you want to defend like 10 six instead of this or whatever the blocker thing is right but like you're supposed I mean, to be i mean i would have i would have, I would have probably defended i mean i could probably have like queen five suited but didn't check this flop like i could just check call and then turn and then turn five and then mix call and fold or whatever on turn i would have looked at it that way but but the ev is going to be zero either way right because yeah. you're not beating any bluff, so your hand is, uh, or you're not beating any value, so your hand is a bluff yeah. catcher, so it's zero EV, it doesn't really matter what you do, but for you do not overfold, so you do need to call here sometimes. For sure. Do you know what yeah, he has? aces, bro. I'm the best. Aces. Uh, of course. Ace and the ace, of course. That's why you went for free streets, bro. <laughs> The board deck again, I can check, but um, yeah, I, I don't think it matters. You can, I think you can even probably bet big here. You can bet most of your range here. Yeah, there's too low, there's too low enough cards, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's okay. And my, my hand just really enjoys betting. <laughs> it doesn't really make too much sense to check that one. <clears throat> You're supposed to be uh, ISO. I don't know if Ford used Sweden is ISO in people. Reflop to be yeah, fair. I wasn't sure but, like, about this one in game. But, but suited yeah. like I, I would have smaller found some ones. Of the stuff, like, yeah, smaller ones just yeah. want to. I'm just not sure if this. And then, and then like Jack do suited, ten do suited makes sense too. Yeah, like sure I was just thinking like if you have like seven three suited, like stuff like that. Yeah, it, it will want to yeah. ice it sometimes. I do know some people missed the suited bottom so Yeah, sure. you win, buddy. Yeah, close, close. Yeah, I'm actually not like, I'm actually not that sure you want to ever fight this white here. And the idea is, yeah, you have like, there's a lot of there's a, there's a bunch of collision blind me blind here, and like I'm also just playing into a sixty. Yeah, and another thing is like, this guy is in position. He's supposed to be probably calling against most of your opens. Does that really three betting range? Yeah, and then he's a man that will be as well. So. And the big blind is over here, so. 
small blind and the small blind is very straightforward strategy it's kind of like yes. i would probably be like most of what happens i think over here is you open and this guy calls then this guy calls or you get jumped by this so i think like yeah. you're gonna play both slop quite a bit here and your hand is not like uh, suited for both flop i would say so yeah i, I, don't, I don't really like I, 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 I think folding here would have been right yeah You've not seen any checks, brother. You said it. You said it. I mean, that was. I mean, that was. I don't think that was a spot to check. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> we'll shock well, me to see. Uh, we'll shock me to see any... some free bets here with this one. Yeah, um, I could. I, I can. I entertained it in game. Ace two suited. I was in a pure, and then this one, I was like on the line. Um, yeah, yeah, the ace two suited always like ace two. Ace two is the holy grail. Yeah, <laughs> like Absolutely. always loves the three bet. Doesn't really matter. You always use ace two suited, and then if Malaka click four bets, I am all in on him so fucking quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this pro is always c betting, huh? I did a funny thing here on the river. I went slightly too big. I think I just did. I just I just pulled out the giraffe meme because I'm whaling. You know, that's mm. all this was. I think also getting greedy against Black is not that bad. He's going to know that I'm bluffing all the low pairs and probably even Atex. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, it's only a little thin, but I just wanted to pull out the Giraffe 69, if I'm honest. Do you think he's going to gonna call you with Jack X here often? Yeah, he loves calling. Malak is one of the biggest stations. <laughs> it's basically. Okay. B That's just again. Because if he has ace 10 plus, he's going to probably barrel on the turn, even though he's supposed to be checking, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, like, it's yeah, not... yeah he's, he's very, I think he's very, he's too linear on the turns of value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and so. that is only way you get to choose this size. If he's checking mm -hmm. ace 10 plus, I don't think you get to choose this uh, size at all, because he's not pro. Unless you think he's really going to call you off them with uh, check X, queens and kings. Like queens, kings probably. Calls I, 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 honestly, I honestly think I honestly think he would call those sounds quite a lot. Mm -hmm. it, again, a very villain. This is a very villain thing. But there are some people I would. I mean, I would never consider this against most people. For sure. I, I think Equilibrium would just tell you like bit small. Yeah, like B thirty three, B forty or something. Yeah. yeah. What's really nice, though, given his strategy that he's just going 1.1 bigs, is that like, it's really easy for me to have a lot of bluffs, sir, uh, because I'm just going to float a pair, low pair, and it just doesn't have any showdown value, you know? Uh, so it's not very difficult to have stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Nice. Good hand. I like the size. Solver, Solver loves yeah. these small sizes over here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just makes a lot of logical sense here, right? It's not like he's going to be flooding. Oh, here we go. This is the fun this is the most fun hand of the game. Uh, this is a ball. It's up there. <laughs> Oh, it is. It, it is. It is for sure. But I, I, I again, um, Malaka has ace ten off here, and I think he's just overcooking frequency. Why not click so. it then? Um, I think that's reasonable. If you uh, if you think he overdoes it, do you think he's like overdoing four bet chance, uh, five bet chance? Because the um, what the other, I, I, I mean, I didn't think about the pre flop so much as I, I, what happened post flop is that I think he's like misapplying flop sizes on the like, he, like he B25 is a flop that I think he, like, it's the strength of his range, he needs to be going bigger against my range. And I thought that happens too much, like you see it here. So, what you're saying is you're going to two bet aggressively in, uh, on the flops? No, I'm going to float aggressively by a calling. Because it's not—he's kind of super handcuffed on turns and rivers with what he can do. But if he's due, and he's just—and he's offering—and he's, he's offering me too good of a price on the flop. Basically, he like his range wants to be bigger here. I'm like very confident. Mm. Well, the idea—I think the idea is if you think he's overdoing it, that means he's over overfolding. Basically, he will have too much of bluffs. If he has too much of bluffs, that yep. means he's going to uh, fold too much against your four bets. So auto profit. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind clicking. Like I think clicking is very reasonable. That's a kind of similar idea on the flop if he bets. Like, first of all, this this bet side is bullshit. There is no. Oh, like, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me pull a. Where, where's the range view? So, the idea over here should be he does not have these hands. Like, yeah, sure, he's going to have king, queen, maybe yeah. queen check a little bit, but for the most part, yeah. his range is this, right? This is his yeah, value. Range. Absolutely. None of this wants to go to this size because your range. Oh, and, and, and I and I and the, one of the. I mean, the reason I called, I didn't really think about four bet clicking in the thing game. I'll give you that. But like mm -hmm. the reason I made pre flop call, I didn't really go in terms of the four bit direction. I literally anticipated this to happen actually. 
Mm. Uh, I, I think when this happens, I get to like I, I get to like make way more than my pot share post for basically. I think you, uh, but, but you still want to tube it. Also, I think like saying that. I, 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 think, I, I think I think raising pops like makes sense. Yeah. But I do. I also think it's like, you might think that, but are you capable of like thinking of all the one thousand seven hundred fifty five flops? And how they all play out, all the turns and stuff. Like there's just like too many factors to think of, like thinking like that in like on the future streets. But I can get behind like you thinking like you're gonna have Edge playing in position and he plays very straightforward. Yeah, I can get behind that. But I do think like only thing I would like worry pre flop would be that like if he has Ace ten, he's going to five bet Chame stand in my face that that would be terrible. Yeah. And I, he's maybe, not... I'm, I'm pretty sure, I think a lot of his free betting range would five bet against the click for sure. I, I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I mean But I guess I you just jam then, right? You know. If he's overfolding is good. Yeah, yeah, I mean I mean that's that's reasonable. Um, I talked with some friends about it, and yeah, and some of them came to that conclusion too that jamming is probably like a really good play here yeah. pre flop. Yeah, over here I just would love to raise like first of all his range is just, polarized. Just if his range is polarized, he's supposed to be uh, sizing up, right? He's not sizing up. Yeah, so... exactly. Yeah, I mean, this is this is why I'm not folding, right? But, like, mm -hmm. I can also see raising. Um, I think in, in this spot, it's really important if someone's like that polar, but it's betting like small. I mean, even in like some one and nines or against other players, you could even see them bet smaller when they're meant like they could be twenty when they're meant to be forty, right, or something like. And then when that is the case, I think it's really important that people realize here that I need to defend the flop a lot here. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna over realize against his strategy because he's actually gonna have to overcompensate in turn check given risk premium and how his range is shaped. Mm. I, I do think your hand will still. I'm, he... I'm, 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 I'm abusing the idea a little bit here, but like hands like King Ten suited, for example, folding the flops just like a pretty decent error, I would say. Um... Mm. If he's balanced, I think you're supposed to be mostly actually still folding here. But like based on what everything you said, there's no fucking folding. Just raise, <laughs> go. Yeah, I think raise is fine, but also this this happens way too much too, there's no... <laughs> so you make it really, I think, a lot. So, I so... Mean, but this is a very expert kind of hand. This kind of doesn't really make sense to me either. It's kind of like, why are we betting into... Do, do you think he has any culture? Uh, I think he's overfolding. I think his ace highs actually have to strongly consider calling. Yeah, I... Because um, so much of his range is ace X. Like, so much of his range is ace I kind of... I would... I guess you just like... I think a guy that would like to size up here. I would probably bet like two days. I, 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 I debated. I debated like a full third part. Yeah, let's say you know relative size up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the idea I would be based on what you're saying. It's very likely it's just going to fall about like ninety five percent of the time. Yes. So um, I was challenging him to defend that. I mean, he had a ten off. I'm challenging him to actually start finding zero EV calls with like something in the hand class, right? Mm -hmm. in, in my sizing. But like a hand like I think like ten BB, eleven BB makes a bit more sense. My Queen X and also. Uh, it cleaned. I mean, like you're just you're you're yielding more more faults for sure. But yeah, I don't really mind actually going ten big points to jam the river as well. Kind of feel yeah, like yeah. that's that's like pretty nice as well. But that was a pretty important part because like I now have like a big lead again. That was actually a pretty massive swing. You consider how does it feel to play uh, play at this point? How does it feel? It feels good. I mean, I, I mean, after the King Jack hand, you're feeling on cloud nine, you know. <laughs> Psychologically, like, you know, you're like, I can't wait till the stream sees that one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is actually a spot where it shocked me to see you're just supposed to be jabbing here. First of all, in position player probably got to open like 25 over here. And you yeah. just... Solar would say rip here a lot with this type of equity. Again, if he's going to play correctly, you can do it. I don't yeah. mind call it like I, I guess you're not supposed to be. I think, I think anything's on the table here, but like the fo the fall is pretty nice for re raising, right? I think generally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For sure, could definitely. I, I thought about all those kind of things. I think I should open shift this hand. I think this is slightly. I think I, I ran the sim on this. It was like it's really close between raising and shoving this combo. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Bro, it's always close with these. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, we just stack off against a 10 BB here. And... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, will, I don't mind folding if somebody is like, if I had the thinking he's on the tighter side. Yeah. So I, I don't think in that case you will see that, or like in general in higher stakes, but like lower stakes, you will see guys who's like, 
you don't have information, oh, wait, but wait, 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 but, but dark, like yeah. he's supposed to be jamming quite a bit here because you're opening so wide and he's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, he has a lot of, of he has a lot of fold equity. He has a yeah, lot of fold equity. Yeah, but a lot of people are like uh, just scared, so to speak, and like I don't mind a fold against like a tighter weaker player in general. These spots. Yeah, he's a he's a strong rank. It's a day young day young K. He end, obviously he ended up winning. <laughs> bro, bro, you see. Against Aces, I said, like, ah, probably wouldn't do it. Against Kings, wouldn't do it. Over here, against A7, maybe. Like, I, I still think in Denke, I would call. <laughs> but still, pointed out, like, it's already close. I, I actually, I actually, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hand I make a bigger call against him, but, like, it might be a bit ambitious and you might disagree. I think free betting this is fun, like, small sometimes, but. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, somebody fucking this is, checked. This is an interesting hand. Somebody's checking the flop. That's... Yeah, isn't it? No, I mean they, uh, the uh, the IP player is Dayan K, and he's like a very strong guy. So he plays like high stakes cash too, but he's like learning MTTs and playing some high stuff, you know. So to, to be fair, I mean, I was I was very suspicious <laughs> of this. I was I, I was very suspect of this bet. Like if I if I had something that wasn't this, I would have been here or calling here a lot here. I think. I think like, I, I think the whole line should he should have quite a bit of ASEX played like this actually. Sure. Uh, he actually had king ten offsuit, so like you know, definitely that's just why we don't consider king five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just better hands, which is a bit problematic. <laughs> but yeah, I remember, I remember pausing on the river. I was like, hmm, okay, okay. But to be fair, but I do, I do, I do agree though. I do agree. But but to be fair, uh, as you play high stakes, if you if you play against the good cash game guys, as much as I I have talked with cash game guys and seen how they play. Because the way the cash game is played in general, it's actually quite close to how I see it plays out anyways. There are some changes, pre-flop and yeah. stuff, but like I think the cash game rates will be ve are very good in final levels by default, knowing cash game. Yeah. That's right. So whatever, can jam, can raise. I think you want to limp, have limps here. Ah, actually, actually, this is a spot where you might have a limping range. Whenever the stacks are yeah, getting I, I, a little I think bit closer, yeah, mm -hmm. Th this is like, there is no like very short stack. In those cases, you actually yeah. will see less jamming, more raising and limping coming in. Yeah, if this that guy... sounds quite nice for raising. Does it, I mean, it, it, may, it makes the immediate better hands fold, right? Tends to mm -hmm. make a lot of sense. Like, can't quite limp all the time. One thing to say, as you said, like he's more, you expect him to be a little bit uh, defending too much. Again, your raising, comes from him, he, uh, you're raising mostly is stealing because he has risk for you. If he does not fold yeah. enough, I think you kind of want to actually switch to more limp happy oh, game. Just because like the risk premium whole idea yeah. is like his, his risk premium is bigger than yours against him, right? He, yes. He's supposed to be folding because of that. But if he's not, then then you're you can't really steal you can't like pressure that icm so to speak no. tempted but like this blinders of blind spots it's like you can't always bluff you need to have just the give ups yeah and i think it's important on this board that you just don't just lazily bet too queen jack three is going to be doing very well on this, especially if he's a little constricted pre flop i mean i don't mm -hmm. i don't you know I would say all the overfolding is probably, you know, I, I mean, he's definitely not overfolding, but like, um, he might not, he, he might not be like that much underfolding, you know. So like, he's still gonna be doing pretty yeah. well on these boards, and I have like a lot of these kind of fan classes. It's really important to regulate yourself and everything. I think at some point uh, I used to always bluff this. Like, if I had this, I bluff. I, I just like doesn't really make sense, but like, bet one, how bad can it be? <laughs> yeah. Jackson five, baby. Kind of similar idea, right? It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just like you're gonna have so much different stuff over here. Mm. Would shock me to see you supposed to be calling here, non-zero. Yeah, I, I debated it briefly. Nah, it's probably too wide. I thought it, I, 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 I gave it a brief thought in game. Um, obviously, queen high is a way better than pass, but yeah, I, I thought about like the defense of like jack high potentially. I like the limp here. Oh. I wasn't sure about my riddle strategy here. I might have been sloppy. I got a bit lost here, to be honest. Um, what are your oh. thoughts? I don't think you want to bluff this type of equity. Because you play, like, once you play uh, Limp Core, right? 
you're gonna have still a lot of suited like wheel hands here to bluff and you kind of want to bluff off this type of hands that yeah I, 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 have, I have the wrong cards here i, I did i think i was sloppy mm -hmm. in the sun for sure <laughs> um. <laughs> Ooh. This is a very similar to the last spot, I think. This is like your bottom yes. if he's jams correct. This is range. this is very this is very I mean ace tens are still cool for sure. Like a lot of people might miss that. Yeah, yeah. But it got, does come down to like is he going to I think jam I think this is basically if he's overdoing the offsuit ace x shoves, then ace nine becomes a call for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, I think it's a cool even call actually. If you allow, yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is solver to play it. This is, this probably looks surprising to people, but I think especially in this tournament too, like taking this like and this his hand is like a, like never shoves either actually, it's kind of interesting. It does get called by King Jack suited, but he <laughs> does so well against my raised holds. Mm -hmm. I don't want, uh, but seeing that hand, um, I, I don't I don't think it's uh matter. Like there's like a thing you can't study his hand always. Doesn't matter that much. Like yeah, yeah it's like. If he never jams, I think like as you like, I think it's more of a question how often he jams Asex and how often is he jamming like these off sweep broadways in general, like Jack Ten. Uh... I, I, I was fairly confident he was going to be finding the Jack Ten Ten Nine Ace, or he'd already pre matched mm. Queen Jack suited, so uh, I was pretty. Yeah, confident. yeah, so probably fine. So I think Ace Nine then becomes very reasonable. Yeah, bro, I can't beat these guys in all ends, by the way. How bad do I run? <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for you, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you you find that violin, you know. <laughs> I do like to see better over here, but like again, like you're supposed to pro most likely have a checking range even over here. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It's just nothing to point out because, uh, as I said, like everybody fucking just dead club. Yeah. Malaka, malaka. Interesting spot. <laughs> oh. He's just so one pair dense, right? Um, I have a lot of like backdoor floating hands, right? Uh, you know, ten nine off, nine eight off club, queen ten off club, um, parts, you know. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I I, I, I kind of like it, as you said before as well. I just very like like happy to call. At this guy, like you're yeah, just yeah. polarizing fully yourself, so I kind of yeah. like this line. Wow, seven three. Yeah. Well, I run so good. He just makes two per. Fuck you know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I pulled out the six point nine. I was just doing homage to, to giraffe a little bit, you know, for a little bit of fun. With like with sizings that are reasonable, you know, and obviously. Again, I'm like choosing a slightly bigger size because he's got so many suited hands of overcards, right? So he needs to put a bit more pressure on those. Like B25 here doesn't like probably lose us some EV, I would guess. Um, I think this is close. King of Hearts is really easy to bet. This one's kind of on the line, but it still achieves quite a lot. What do you think? I don't. Uh, I I don't mind it. It's just like you're gonna have a lot of like. Yeah, you're gonna need to use this. this you, you have a you have a yeah. lot of stuff like ten free off, fucking nine free off. You know, I mean, sorry, nine free off is easy value, but like. Uh, I thought, like, you know, heart regulation, obviously King of Hearts is a trivial bet, right? And it's like, the deuce isn't doing much for me, but it's like, maybe non-zero. So. What do you think about King 4 here? Do you think it was okay? Or... Small ante. Maybe it just opens, I don't know. It kind of feels like another situation where, like, if it was other way around. I think, I'm actually, yeah. I've actually, I, yeah, I, I found the fall button for once, you know? Yeah, Not yeah, but that, right? I... I, I <laughs> I didn't really mind it. I think you can open if you want. Yeah, I think it's really close. Is. The anti, like, are you really considering these spots? Too? The anti small as well, right? Like, you've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Um, I think it's on the line. I think it's. I, I, I haven't really looked at that many, like, four handed uh, solutions, but three handed, you actually get uh, play pretty tight on the button. And yeah, four handed, sure. kind of similar. I, 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 I had a similar I had a similar idea with you, but. And, like, the ICM actually goes down in. I don't know about, like, whenever it's a special event, like Super Millions or, or like, whatever special live events, right? It's a little bit, might be a little bit different uh, payout structure. But in general, yeah, this like. Is, this was inc incredibly flat payout, so. Like, okay. There is but in general, like. Them, yeah. Like four four handed already goes down, uh risk premium three handed goes down, so it's kinda like that. Especially if it gets toppy, right? Especially if it's a toppy payout, especially live or something. Mm-hmm. It's close, but 
it's I, I, it's I like the fold. It's it's more likely to be a fold than a call, so. Yeah, for sure. Get in the bin, Malacca. I like this. I like I like checking a lot here when I'm playing two street with like my red RFI polar idea. I don't know what you think. Um, but he, he was in. The, he had a seven no backdoor, and you could tell he was like deeply, deeply hurt about this. <laughs> he fold a seven. He folded a seven. Yeah. Uh, go on, he son. Go on. He had spade, but I mean, <laughs> talk about an efficient bet. Talk about an efficient bet if he's holding a seven, right? <laughs> like this is yeah, like but. In general, I would assume you do, you just want to bet like you're not going to go bigger than two dirt zero because he's gonna have a lot. Uh, he's gonna have a decent amount of flush uh, two pairs straights in his range. Still, yeah. it's very difficult to start sizing up with ICM. Like you can make a. Yeah, I, argue... I, think two, I think two thirds makes sense. I think checking two thirds for me makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like if you go this size, it might happen, but then you're building kind of range with like ten eight maybe like yeah. eight five and that's about all your value you can have maybe like small frequency two like six seven but like that's very like i would just by default use like tutors here uh rather than yeah I, 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 think two thirds would be... I run so good that you just folded a seven though because you know against two thirds i don't think he was folding <laughs> <laughs> but he obviously have the non backdoor suit too obviously it's a problem. yeah lee pay playing an rfi strategy here makes sense right so depending on i suppose uh with 20 it is close at 30 he's not supposed it is, to it is, it is pretty it is, it is pretty so, close i think yeah. i think i would yeah like 28 is kind of like you're like if he had 30 he's not supposed to actually have raises or like raising would be okay. like less than five percent but like 28 and, 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 and 25 was 20 yeah yeah so yeah. i think Probably it matters more. too much though sure mm. uh i think this was, this was really really close i think I think you need. Yeah, to I should use a reasonable size four x without uh with a half on. See, I think it was. Really, I thought it was really close. I think defending's fine. Yeah. I, only thing is, like, if you have like blocking something that you like, you want him to have. If he chooses like ten x or nine x blockers, because like, you're probably opening about like uh, how how wide would you say you open here? Forty. Yeah. So if you probably. open, uh, maybe a bit, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit less actually. Okay. I think it's around. Maybe, 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 yeah, 40, 40 is probably about right. It's a bit more than, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's like 35, 40, and he's three betting. Yeah. You're supposed to be, more, because you are in position, you need to find defense about like 15% of your range. Around there, it has to be around there, about like 40 to 45% uh, yeah. you need to defend. So you get to fold 55 uh, to 60%. So, then I suited, I do think it's going to be in there. Like unless there is some blocker thing happening with these two ranges, I kind of think, uh, kind of think yeah. it will have to be in. But that is that one thing to say. I do think check ten suited, ten nine suited, and nine eight suited. Often in the solver world, you will see like it might fault this one. It just hates this combo. But I do think like logically speaking and like how you need to think, I do think this is just you overfolding most likely. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I I did run the sim on that one. Oh, my friend <clears> ran the sim on this one. It was you're you're pretty close to spot on with all your thoughts. It's like literally a mix call and fold. <laughs> it's mm. very very close. But you're yeah. defending like six seven suited nine eight suited probably. Yeah, that's all six seven suited. I'm happy and also like king eight uh, like the, the king eight suited and stuff is what I'm finding the defense mm. too. And obviously like I'm gonna jam a lot as well. But but I do think it's against more. human it does make okay. sense to actually call this more than in solver. Because yes. like human is going to choose a bluff with like king six, king five, king three, like on the smaller yep. end rather than this. So it does make it's it also a it's also cool. really important to acknowledge that like if you're playing a lower stakes tournament for people that are watching, if they go like six point five BB folding is like a pretty big error. But like eight BB is where you yes. he's driving me to indifference for this class, which is like, yeah, exactly. Kind of his idea. Yeah, uh, it's a very sizing sensitive spot for sure. Yeah, if you, even if he goes seven big lights, I think it's probably going to be. Oh yeah, oh, oh trivia, I would trivia. Uh, actually, I think even against eight people. I was, I was, I was, I was indifferent. I, I was against eight with a half empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think defending with ten nine suited was probably making a small amount of money, but it's yeah, it's very on the line for sure. Do you think he's going Change to check? Pop? Seems good. Do... Mm. Sorry, go ahead. So, 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 I think this is more important on lower stakes, not over here. But do you think once you check the turn, he's going to stack off enough by double barreling or even finding bluffs here? 
Because like on the smaller uh, stakes. I mean, I mean, at the smaller stakes, no. So it's probably more imperative you bet. But uh, at the higher stakes, I think it's an important check. It's like one of those. It's very villain dependent. Mm -hmm. Because um, as as soon as imposition player does not find bluffs here, you are not supposed to be ever checking this. And in yes, I, absolutely. And I in in general, I, I also think it would be very bored check if he had dirty big blinds and this guy had twenty, because he would be more likely to bot control. Even like yes. I I kind of dislike it still, just because it's like very likely he's going to bot control here. And whenever he's going to bot control, it's disaster if you don't get paid with sevens, right? So I kind of, I'm more leaning towards like you want to bet because I, I also suspect like he might even check back some King X here. Maybe, probably not, but like maybe some King X is not going to put in uh, all the chips here. And that would be a huge problem for your hand. That would be a disaster, yeah, for sure. So I, I, I'm the... I think I kind of like to go go for bet, but sure, it is one of those hands you kind of want. Uh, okay, what's your thoughts on the river? Uh, his bet is a uh, call check range should be very like suit ace dense and queen high dense, so, like didn't play but uh sad blind check to IP. Like his flop defense on is gonna have lots of like two over three straights, but a lot of those that don't have the flush draw are gonna bet the turn. So on the river, he's going to raise a lot against block. Especially if he's pot control the king, he should still have a non all in raise. Uh, any flush is going to raise. I block the 7x. So I'm, I'm, tar I'm both targeting a side queen high and also forcing him to play a raising strategy like significantly because I can just have like a 5 or like a low 7 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, pocket 6 is maybe, you know, things like this. So um, you're sizing down here. Your value comes from his bluffs, right? So whenever you think he's not going to fight uh, two bit bluffs, this size will uh, lose you massively EV because you need to get that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, against this guy, might happen, but like, this is something that's like, unless I really have like decent amount of reach. You, you, you need you, you need this. This has to be. This is a a, tra a strategy that you need to really know your villain well. I think, sure. Yeah, and like I think a big problem in this spot. Even in your spot is you're playing for a 1.5 billion, right? Even your high stakes sure. rig, it might still like get to some people. Like, yo, I'm not just mm -hmm. gay. Like, I know I need to bluff here, like ace four with ace of hearts. I'm just not queen, going to queen do ten it, off right? Suit. Queen ten off suit with a queen of hearts. Yeah, yeah like this, I'm just yeah. not going to do it because it's so much money. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna like let's let's play the next one. And this is kind of yeah. like. I feel like you're probably just going to end up missing a little bit of value by sizing down. Sure. He did jump for value, though. Just nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He. I mean, and the ten eight suited shows a lot about the bet check strategy that I employed, right? Just because of the villain. Like he's found mm -hmm. the um, the flow, and like I think every other ten eight suited bets a turn, right? Like very often. But like mm -hmm. he checks because he had the flush draw combo, so that's probably just worth pointing out. Um. So I do think because everybody is kind of like these are, players are close. I do think you're gonna have a decent amount of uh, limps here. Your, your strategy yeah, should I, maybe I was, be I was, run, I was running. I was running a limping strategy for sure. Hmm. Uh, and this was just like whatever I think. Just check call, I guess. I think I like more check call. I don't mind the value bet though. It's just very it's close, difficult. Yeah, I agree. It's like do you think king high calls you? Like you kind of say you think uh, king you high calls. Always. Yeah, I mean, he should also. Always, I mean, but... like, the thing is, the like, King High should also consider raising as well, right? So it's like you can do both things, which is like not great. Mm. But... I guess I don't mind it. Yeah. Aces, huh? Again, what do you, you think about flop here? I thought about check. I think it's close. Uh, yeah, I think you're supposed to be checking. But I do think you need to do both here. Yeah, I, I I I just mixed the two. I, I was unsure with the combo. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking close. about about like maybe your combo likes to check actually more. Yeah, I, I I agree with that too. I agree with that too. Kind of makes sense. Might be wrong though. But I mean, he's supposed to defend any ace high right at the same time, so it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. sort of this. Um... I don't think your bet Thank size makes sense here. Just size up. Yeah, sure. I could, yeah, like two thirds, because even an eight can go two thirds, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it just does make really sense. Like, yeah, I should go a side a bit bigger. Yeah, small, small thing though. Queen six suited. What do you think here? 
I think he's so, like this type of spots tend to be like bo- all the bottom layers like need to play quite tight. Even though you are covering mm-hmm. them, I don't think you can because they are like by default. I think you, they are going to be capped to like open thirty five ish here. Yeah, and because of that, sure. his tight range is like you don't really get to go ahead and start calling here. Yeah, I I, I I I think it I think it the same. Yeah, and you have a six to go for uh, three bets, right? So you don't really need to. Or even just it. a suited king, if I really wanted to go for one, like. Yes. <laughs> but if I had to guess, could be non-zero if you want to mix it in here and there. I just think you're yeah. probably overdoing it if you start using it yeah. because, like, yeah. Absolutely, I agree. I agree for sure. <laughs> I know it's like ninety, thirty, thirty. So, I mean, now he's down to twenty, actually, right? Uh, so, what do you think? Do you I, generally. I'm actually not sure you're gonna have a jamming range here. The 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 oh, risk. I, I, remember, this is like incredibly flat for what it's worth. This is 900 to 1.2 to 1.5, which is like kind of sick. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, sickening for these the, guys actually. It, it's um, just like the three way that like the three way that yeah. ICM does change, but like they do have this guy should have quite a high risk premium because of this guy in, uh, either yeah. way. So it's not that. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't sure in game whether I should play the jam or not, but I, I went for it. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't much. Let me see. It, obviously, if it was a more top-heavy payout structure, I wouldn't be playing jams. But the the flatness is like pretty disgusting, right? Because <laughs> it was. So, so this is disgusting. this is a little different. This is uh, peak blind thirty and other guy forty, so a little bit deeper, but like no yeah. jams over here. No jams at that point. Yeah, but it is like. I do think like this is like this three-handed play. Just that do change a little bit here and there. Yeah, sure. Definitely, I've overcooked this one for sure. Trying to look if I got something more closer. BBD. Nah, whatever. Let's move on. I think this is too too wide of open. Like yeah, th- like. There is less antis and like, I think in like these uh, three-way hands you were actually like not even supposed to be opening over fifty, maybe even forty-five. You do get to pressure them a lot, but like the the way everything kind of changed in these type of scenarios, and people are like way too lose three-handed, including me. Like yeah. I, I was literally like looking this stuff up, and I was like, what the fuck's going on here? I'll tell you, you're supposed yeah, to be we, actually. We will, I just had a fun. Yeah. You're. For sure. You're actually supposed to be using a lot of sizing up as well, uh, to 2.5x, I believe, because we ran like a size test for these type of spots. Sure. Let me see. Where's the button, Tim? Button. That's 90, 30, 30, 30. So this is uh, button 80. 40 and 30. You can see it's like you're gapped yeah, to 50. Pretty, not too far off, yeah. So I probably I probably get up to like 51, 52, but that's not Jack 6 off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although that being said again, remember this is like the flattest payout structure. You're basically ever gonna yeah. find, but like even still, even still, you what you're saying is definitely true. And I agree for sure. I do think only time you can make argument is if people are either folding pre-flop too much, which is very difficult to make a read because they are already supposed to be quite tight or they've overfolded yeah. the seabeds which you can also argue that they're actually supposed to be folding a lot on the flop so yeah it's yeah kind of weird spot so to speak i, I like this that seems pretty way up right yeah. this this one was just about not jam, but I do jam this in quite a lot by this point. I have opened a big enough gap here with the payout structure. Yeah. Uh, but this was the wrong hand class. This is just a raise forward, actually. I think it was wrong. Yeah, that makes I more sense. Yeah. Uh... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tiny thing, because like, I do make better fold in the small blind. He actually folded a pretty good hand. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. One thing to say, it does matter. Like you don't have fifty big ones here, right? If you have fifty, you yeah, like yeah. Get... It's, it's the fact the fact I've extended the gap is very important. Mm-hmm. Very important thing to, for people to notice. I don't think enough people notice. That. At, at this point, I can definitely start leveraging, like because he's quite decently ahead of the bottom right, and now I've got like I've I'm up to like ninety three now. I figured that this is the point where I can start playing this. No, I, I don't mind just raising either. Uh, like yeah, I think I think both both are okay here, right? But that's that's definitely a point where I can um I can I do start shoving right. So that's that's fine. Yeah. When you flips, 
Yeah, you just told us earlier you don't win all ins, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Heads up. This is actually one one blazer I feel like uh I could be better. <laughs> like yeah, like, I mean, uh, like yeah, a lot absolutely. better. I've it's... done a lot of work recently because um we we've i I've, I've done some we've done some work in some groups I've been in recently and I've been mm -hmm. getting better at a bunch of it. A bunch of it has been deeper stack heads up though. So like at the twenty and fifteen I need to go back and drill a little bit because like frequencies of betting do go up. Like mm. versus them versus deeper, but I, I, um, I was I'm, I, I was a little bit lazy and I did work on some aspects of that at least. Mm. But, I used to do like we we talk how we used to look at the uh, heads up stuff, but it's it's still like I I think I did to do it like once a year, maybe like few days, get very deeply in, yeah. and then it's like fuck that next year and then again. You don't do it again. For the rest <laughs> yeah. Of the year. yeah, 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 for sure. I agree. It's fine. I mean, what's really good about Heads Up now is that this is a pure shove as well. This is a, I think a lot of people miss this one. This is pure. Yeah. Pulls of shards as well. 20... Yeah. Is it really jam? Yeah, yeah. I told you, man. I've been in... I, I know some of this stuff. <laughs> Bros have been in the lab, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's the four, five, five, six, seven, six. I actually lost Heads Up for oh! a race. Oh! seven, six suited. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna trust you if you say like you lost a bra bracelet <laughs> doing this. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I shoved seven six suited uh, in this spot too and lost. That. Yeah, it was in Vegas. Like it was in 2021, so I'd already looked at the heads up charts back then. You know, it was an early, it was an early adopter. I have 20 B versus population. Well, look at Bowie. Nah, this is not in. But six five is. I I have it on GTA Wiz at 25 and it shoves at 25. Oh, I, oh at 25? We can check that yeah. as well. But but it's obviously going to be a little bit on the inputs as well. Do you use like two sizes uh, for... Uh, uh... It yeah, is coming, nice coming in. Yeah. yeah. You are... But it's hand cost that a lot of people would miss like 6.5 suited like kind of late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like... But like a lot of people just hit the ASEX off, maybe don't have the King 5 off and then like miss this, right? I think mm. uh, they have the deuces through force or whatever. But like... Yeah. Do you have? Uh, are you are, are you using two sizes for heads up? That is actually something that comes in. No, the I, I, have ran, I have it ran. I have it run for one size. Okay, um, but that does do that does come in a lot. Like, I, I use I use I use two I use two ISOs. I use like three ISO sizes though. Though I use like seven X all in and three X. Seven X makes a lot of sense. Do you know what I mean? Like the seven X ISO like against the twenty limps. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's and like, so it like H-Jack off, so you make a ton of sense, and then you can just really offset with, like, some dog shit hand. Just <laughs> hold. Like, wait a second. How, I how... raise that 9-6 suited, I just, I just, I 9-6 off, I just make Yeah. Uh, I, you just have to play a mixed strategy, and then obviously this guy's high 6 cash record is probably better than me in this format, to be honest, so like, I'm pretty, <laughs> I was mixing pretty hard here. Uh, what, what, what is, like, going on at this point, when you make heads up, you lead? Are you already like, like? Did they allow making deals here? Did you think about deal? Uh, there was no deal up function. Also, what's worth considering is that there's a chess clock, right? And because I've played so many hands on this FT, like, because obviously I'm the chip leader, I'm incentivized to play. I'm mm -hmm. obviously have the highest VPIP, right? I've been chip leader from start to finish. <laughs> yes. I've actually, I've actually run out of time bank, and GG have still not yet considered <laughs> extending time bank for heads up in the 10Ks, which I think is insane if we can't deal. Like I think personally it's absurd, but you know. Well, need to use your time better. <laughs> basically, I had I, I basically at this point already had like was down to base zero bank and get like five seconds of decision. So. And what about him? Just which is rough. Uh, he has like a minute. Oh, if it okay. went on, if it didn't go on too long, the heads up. Like I think if we made it to break, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe then he then then we're both on zero or something, you know. But um, yeah. Do you battle here sometimes? I think I've got enough showdowns to check call, but I could be wrong. I think Barrel could be okay too. He has to float very wide against B25. He doesn't interact with the two and the three much, right? So he's going to find a lot of defense from beyond that. The King Nand is okay against. But I could be wrong. I could Barrel as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, like, good. Just showdown King Nand. I mean, this is guys that I think we, this kind of shows that we understand how the width of range is here, that we're both like showing down King Nand. Obviously, one of us yeah. could bluff potentially, but like we're both, we both understand the heads up is so wide, right? You know? Um, that is true. I would probably size a little bit bigger though. Kind of 
I guess it's yeah, half. Yeah, I think I just played one size fifty, like sixty-seven. Like, maybe, like, uh, like, like th that is like uh, if somebody's watching this, it's like it doesn't really matter in sense of EV if you bet 50 50 percent or 60 percent or 70 percent. Not just really, be... as long as your strategy, as long as your strategies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't really matter. EVs will be the same. Really important turn check here, by the way. Matisau said in game on the commentary, like he would always bet. Like betting the sand is actually a mistake on the turn. Um, he has a lot of King X and now just plays check raise and he's gonna play check raise up to all in which is disaster for my hand like disaster because like King <laughs> yeah King for him are very clear if they didn't ISO in like call like King 7 with the King of Clubs you know things like this like I mean obviously yeah 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 you know, hands like that right like betting this hand on turn is like disaster movie <laughs> like, um, Ooh, yeah, so I, 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 I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran this hand in the solve, and I was like, "Yeah, it's pure bet flop, pure check turn." I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, "Okay, I'm, not, I'm, I'm you, playing okay even with the no time." But but, but, but do, do you still uh, barrel sub flushes here, right? Or not flushes, yes. flush draws? It's uh, yeah. more spades, yeah, right? Yeah, some, some, some of the better flush draws, right? Like that, like higher ones. And um, and spades I'm more. Right. And spades more too. Yeah, we yeah. block one club hands at the bottom of the defense. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the river? Man, this is this this must uh, be very frustrating to play. Like you're playing for like yeah half a million, and it's like yo, I don't have any fucking time. Yeah, I, I had no time to think. I figured I figured my hand just very heavily pitches. Like I should slap nine x in bet check and some better like other hands like this, and like the six isn't doing much for me. It, it was uh, five hundred k heads up match, right? Three hundred k heads up, yeah. And, you know, he's wagering quite a lot on yeah. river. He's he's wagering decently north of pot, right? So I didn't think this up needs to really make it in touch. Well, obviously, I didn't have much time to think about that. <laughs> yeah, I figured that was reasonable. I should have enough 9x in bet check for the same reasons that betting this hand's pretty disastrous. It's going to be some combos of 9x, so really it's going to be sucky to bet on the turn. When, like, King High is, like, a pretty still stern defense with such wide ranges for him on the flop. Mm. So, I like it. I like to follow him. Would you ever consider going even bigger orbit, or is this just your standard? If this was just my geo size here, -ish, yeah. I didn't. I mean, maybe you could go slightly front load too, but I mean, it's pretty important. The, the main thing to highlight for people is that my hand's just like nutted value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Once he, he actually, checked, he made he made a, he made he made an insane fold, by the way. He folded a seven, man. Big fucking fold. What what, what is up? People fold. folding a seven against you, like <laughs> yeah, bro. It's me. Yeah, in position, they're just loving the a seven fold, bro. Like, what's going on? <laughs> What's going Always, on, man? I mean, they, they went, they went, they went one for two in right and wrong, you know. The respect, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so this is a that's actually a pretty interesting flop the ten six deuce. Um, like it's really like how you look at these spots heads up is that like hands like queen of diamonds eights become really problematic to bet and face raise, but this hands like value and just easily calls check raise basically. Uh, mm -hmm. You're just pushing equity with this hand against this continue. It's just like something to highlight for people. Again, could maybe half pop, but like it's actually important bet this hand because it just. Has north of fifty, you know, <laughs> decently north of fifty, and he's as it doesn't have a decision against check raise. Can value bet Finn here. I think a lot of people would miss one BB, but like this one probably has to get in there quite often on blocks like eight sevens and no. Uh, seems value bet. No, I'm talking about like I'm going to do a lot of one BBing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going going for that. Yeah, I think I think I think that people would miss like a, a lot of like one BB here, but like I can actually go pretty well. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, a lot of it, so. In, in general, if you look like if you allow one big blind bet on solver, all, all most check lines actually will end up betting one big blind a lot. Yeah, on the river. So like a queen's a there. queen's trivial here, like a, t a ten a ten's a value bet I would guess too, and then mm. like a nine's probably close. You know, anything better than a ten, like ten or better, is like pretty trivial, I would say. That bet one is. He had, eight, he, had he had he had eight seven off, and I was like, oof. <laughs> the better chip. The better snap for. Even though it seems like a, I guess you just want him to keep barreling. Yeah, I just want him to have like the you know, we talk about the hands that don't like that fall into check raises, like they're probably just like open for two streets pretty often. Mm -hmm. That's where I think an EV comes from. Chop it up. I do know you had a really big hand in this one. I don't know what it was, but I do know. I had a, I had a couple. Yeah, I had a couple. I think four three off defend, four two off forward. Just 
just power the value, I guess, right? Especially one more vulnerable, like a. Ah, oh, you just play awesome. Ashbot. To me, it's like, ah, I, yeah. I would like to go like 1.5 peak lines or something like that, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. just choosing like a little bit smaller sides. It doesn't matter. Not on the turn. I've got top pair, buddy. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm all in, buddy. You got 15 bits. How did I lose this, by the way? Insane, right? It's been so bad. Yeah, I, d I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Like, <laughs> why need to be closing? I've won almost every hand so far. <laughs> Don't you want to start? I just up and turn. Yeah, I think two street values close, but I I think that um I do think this node in check 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 gets over bluffed by aggro players on the river by him a little bit. Actually, so I, think, I, I think you're supposed to have some queen x in checking range here as well. I might yeah. actually over over barrel the turn here with the queen. I was going to raise a smaller size on 1.5x here on the river. If you bet like B67, I think it's important that I raise, or like B50, because like a 9's clearly in there. Maybe, like, probably even a 3's mm -hmm. close, but like against this size, I'm just like, okay, sure. Beautiful, huh? All right, buddy. At that right, point, buddy. you must have been like, okay, let's finish it up. Oh, I was just like, oh, I was just like, oh, we're going to be at the bar by like fucking 9 p.m., you know? Having <laughs> 1.5 million rich. <laughs> Obviously, a board I want to give up a lot on against his limp calling range, but my hand mm -hmm. just like has a bit too much like to do like check folding. So I think it just you know this is going to get into the betting range, right? So seems pretty natural to me. Obviously, can I think it was a mix size, so even like there was a friend that said he didn't know about it if it was, but uh, yeah, he got a pretty crazy hand here actually. Cause he, he I think he showed it in game, so I don't know if it'll come up on the replay. But um, yeah, he had an interesting combo in this hand. And, um, Show sure you're curious to know what it is. What do you think about River? I actually think you're guide, guide uh, 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 top of your, like, not top, but like, if I had to guess, I'm not sure about the 10 of clubs, but I, I would, uh, yeah, wouldn't that's, shock that's the me, only thing with it. Then, would, wouldn't shock me to see you're supposed to be calling something. Yeah, maybe just flick this in. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, oh, yeah. I would, I, would, I would have called a bunch of 5x, but, but like, it's, yeah, like, it's also not easy to have a 5 for me because so many of them, like, either don't ISO pre or give up flop. So, like, actually having a 5 is pretty strong, to be fair. Hmm. But, uh, the, like, then a plus is very but weird. But the 10 of plus is always, yeah. It's just a yeah. weird, weird one to have here. Yeah, I agree for sure. Uh, he had Ace Jack of Spades, which is a very interesting limp call at ten. Doesn't really make much sense to me because, like, my ice range be, not all in. Yeah, like, right? answer just yeah, that it's a, it's a jam. pure limp jam. Uh, because what's really important to notice, like, for for people that are watching, is that like hands for me, like Ace Seven Suit, Ace Eight Suit, they just they go free BB here. They don't jam. Like, it's a really important concept. I shove like offsuit Ace X, offsuit King X here, um, but. It's really important to note that even at 10 BB that we have all this suited ace that's like raised non all in. Like, obviously, like these King 10 suited, it's like I do a lot of raising non all in, like pretty linear. And ace jack suited is like, so and you limp call with pairs, but yeah, you can see that the um, the the unpaired part region that you've limped the button with just kind of, you know, goes with it via um, jamming to get it in now. But like, what's also the really important concept for, for people to know at 10 BB heads up there is if you've got like 10s, you, you like highest DV by a long way against a good reg is to limp call. Uh, it's not to limp shove or anything like that. Uh, just something to bear in mind. At a small blind, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, so you can see the shape here. It's like you, you shape your limp get in around an unpair hand that's just pushing equity, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just limp call the rest, and pairs are just like pairs. You basically you can basically trap any pair because I'm meant to offset from across the deck, and you can basically <laughs> just call down. You know? mm -hmm. That's basically how it works. Interesting, and. Again, this is a board that like I used to range bet at fifteen, but even at fifteen, this has like forty percent check frequency. This board heads up because ranges are so wide. That's is it's this so is this one where it's all started now going wrong? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I think my my hand was checking flop a lot. It does mainly bet turn for like geo, but it's close. It's very close. I just mix in game. Obviously, remember I'm playing with no fucking time bank, so I'm just trying to like find. Yeah. yeah. To me, it would make a lot of sense to check this back. To be fair, just because like yeah, you have like, open he, doesn't, he doesn't have ace. He doesn't have ace high, and I've got like ten high. Actually, has pot share, like kind of wildly, you know. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, you're supposed you're supposed to be doing this because it's a limp bot. You're actually unblocking all his bluffs and probably blocking his queen ten, jack tens if he has those. So I got to think you probably always have to call here. Why don't you just call? 
because uh, the hand basically has EV in both nodes, and I just block some of top range as well. So it's like you, they're basically in these spots when you raise IP on rivers. Like you generally want to have a hand that has like some EV in core link too. Um, this hand was mainly a jam as well, because uh, he just has to bet full queen x like very often. Oh, like, no, that's a good clip. Like he has to like strongly mm -hmm. consider it. Do you think he's uh, holding queen x here? Uh, I think this spot gets under bluffed, so yes. Because you need but, to, like, arrive with a rivet 7, because rivet 7 is a key card, because I'm playing around the idea of having pocket 7s or, like, queen 7 myself, check 7. Um, yeah. That, that, is what, that is one thing. It's very difficult to see what is your value here as well, right? It's not that simple no, for you to have Jack Jack 7, power. queen 7, 7, 5, yeah, pocket 7. Yeah, I guess you could have a lot of, like, random 7x, so to speak. 7x base 2 pair, right, and pocket 7s. Yeah, seven, so yeah. That would make a lot of sense, I think. Yeah. So that's because... how you build around the, having the rivet 7. Yeah, but calling would be fine too. He was bluffing, so like, you know. Yeah. They were winning the pop regardless. I wasn't, I wasn't folding, I just like did a bit of jamming too. Mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense because like 7 also is what he's over betting, right? 2 pairs. Like, you basically same yeah, hands, yeah, exactly. you, you value betting. The 7's like a key card. A lot, of people, a lot of people miss this. The 7's a crucial card here in this Yeah, game. yeah. A crucial card. Uh, this is a mistake. This is just the limp. I just got this wrong. By a pip. Because I was feeling a bit of time pressure, you know, I'm not going to make this slightly. Jack 9 offs pure, I think, or close to pure, but like, Dude, yeah. Like, was, it, it, you know. like, if you say, like, it's not a mistake to jam. Like, it's not, it, it can no, never, no, it's, it's, never it's like, be. It's like inaccuracy. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's still going to be plus EV to do it, but like, yeah. Yeah. But it's obviously not easy. To be fair, I think I would just jam here as well. Nah. I'm not, you know, if I'm going to beat myself off over this, then, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't think I would jam, I, like... I, I, usually do, I usually do, like, check limp the spots. Yeah. Well, so. I, I think I would probably jam more often, like, check 10 and check 9, though. Yeah. I think, like, check 8, that would do. But still, like, it doesn't really fucking matter. So we'll see. Yeah. This is how it all started to go wrong, like. Couldn't just win one more all in for three hundred k before yeah, no, you no. head out to. Well, well, at this point, at this point, at this point, we're still chilling, bro. We're still chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Taking yeah, your time, is, huh? No, this is this is this is fucking brutal. This one, this is brutal. Um, so on the river, it's really interesting. My hands close between overbedding and checking, but the reason I checked is because he actually has to be really careful in playing bet check check uh, bet, bet sorry bet check bet. I was pretty surprised. Like, 9x has to be really restrictive here. That's kind of curious, right? Like, he has to be really careful with his 9x playing uh, bet check bet, which is kind of probably surprising to people. And I figured people just, like, over bet check bet 9x, or so jack 10 EV to check goes up, because it just gets reopened more often. I don't know what you think. Yeah, um, I, yeah, like, I... Dude, like, the, the checking idea over here is kind of like, you're talking about value, but, like, most of it matters if you're going to find bluffs right if he's not finding bluffs you need to start betting yourself that's like because you yes. check because you want him to but, bluff. but I mean, it's very easy for him to just have like some random hand right and it's mm -hmm. kind of up and it's gone like but, like, check back to but it, like, it kind of feels like once you check it's like very appealing for this uh for this guy to start betting right it's very appealing yeah, because queen course, yeah, you, you check three times it's like you're gonna have king eyes a size for the most part right mm -hmm. so it's very appealing for Correct. him to bluff yeah. Yeah, so not only not only does he have to restrict himself with value, but he has to restrict his give-ups because he actually doesn't get to value that much. So it can be easy to overcook both sides of that coin, I think, is what mm. you're saying too, right? Which is like very important. I don't, I don't like I don't think I like this. You'd have got non in check raise. So 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 my thinking here is like this kind of smells to me it's just nine to be fair. Or like mm -hmm. some eight. And if this is going to be true, it's not going to call you off. And I still think he's, he can play uh, some traps flushed, or basically some traps like this. So it kind of... There, feels... there are a few, for sure. There are a few, yeah. So I kind of feel like you don't want to go... I would probably, myself, I would... I'm thinking more like going like 8 to Dembi coins here. ABB, yeah, sure. That makes a little yeah, so bit more in sense. Game, in, game, in game, it's really close. Like, I, I did an AI solve, and it's like... Indifferent between raising on all-in and all-in, basically. It's just like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> But in game, like, I'm just thinking what I would do in game. Like, just sure. makes a little bit more sense to me. Wow. I think if I had a bit more time on the river to think, I might have found non-all-in, but I just went for the jugular with the five second, maybe. It doesn't really matter in sense. But actually, a very interesting question. If you go non-all-in to, let's say, then, and he jams, would you call? 
Um, I would probably rather call a deuce, especially if I have a spade. Because Got like, and I at least block quads and I block a full house. Um, because in that case, your hand becomes a block catcher, right? So the question is, what yeah, yeah. So I think Jack, I think this combo would actually would play check raise fold because it's like one of the bad, it's one of the worst of a bad bunch. I'd rather have a deuce of a spade that was playing check raise, mm, rolling, which it yeah. does look for sure, you know, something like this. Um, because then I bought deuces, I bought nine deuces, eight deuces, right? Um, mm -hmm. Pushes, yeah. So I actually think I could find check raise fold with this, right? I think that would make sense. Could check turn again. Too much. Yeah. Plot was a very frequent check. Again, it's one of those ideas, right? Heads up, you've got to find checks all over the all over the shop mm -hmm. the situations. And the, ace, and the aces double suit just makes a lot of sense, right? Also, he's way back in the fucking game now. Yeah, this is it's, interesting, it's, it's this basically is, fifty fifty at this point, right? Yeah, this is this is. So he opens. Check check the flop. Two dirts. You call. You're probably supposed to be mixing here. Yeah, you're supposed to be probably mixing mostly to fault here, though, if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. It might be actually beautiful. Like, that's like something I used to actually do before. Like, I used to go way too often with this this type of equity in general when people bet on the river. And you go for a jam, hey? <laughs> Yeah, so the idea I had in game was that he's going to fin and check bet bet for value, I think, especially with turn size. Um, you know, he has to be really careful on river what he plays check bet bet with, uh, when it's pretty symmetrical, you know? Um, the four isn't really doing anything for me. It's like maybe doing, yeah, it's probably slightly non zero because of his turn size. Like, if he's going for a bigger turn size, it's doing nothing, but in his turn size, he might be doing something. Um, yeah, I was just trying to find. I did just because basically the other idea I had is my turn probe frequency is pretty damn high. They're like a lot of the hands I could find probably often bet themselves. But like hands like King Nine of Hearts for me are just like gonna play pure check call on the turn. Um so yeah. I think it's probably a little overzealous in, in retrospect, but I don't I don't hate it, but like it's sort of weird. He 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 said he RNG call on fold, so maybe that was a three hundred K uh, dice roll for him. <laughs> I was talking to the and afterwards, he's like a friend of mine, so <laughs> okay. Uh... But like, the, yeah, but his nines is actually like um, he can't go for value for two streets. Kind of sick. Um, it's actually too thin on river, but I think people do just like get a little thin. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. Like I, I, I know from my own that I'm probably too thin as well. So one it's, thing, it's really, it's really funny. It's really funny to solve though in this hand. Like I'm actually meant to like bluff a hand better than he has. Like non-zero. If I, if we both play equilibrium, which is kind of sick. Like I think we're cute, like, people are probably pretty far off here, unless you're like an elite heads up player, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, like I have like Queen Ten offsuit again. It's like the um, you know the ten seven spot. It has EV and calling and EV and jamming, um, which is kind of funny. And then they mix his turn check call. Obviously, I think I was just probed it very frequently and just gone for two streets, right? But um, yeah, kind of interesting. <laughs> heads up is just such an intricate game of free yeah. So, many things uh, so, so, so. so what, what, basically, what I I was thinking is. What what is his like pre flop like? Does he how often is he supposed to be opening pre flop of five x? Because if you get like as I understand, you guys don't have much time, right? And your bluffs yeah, 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 are, like, and, and all, all the bluffs on the on the river should or like the way you're gonna play, you're gonna look like I'm gonna have five x, I'm gonna have seven x, I'm gonna maybe have some random two six, right? That's how you're gonna find plus because eight is connecting with uh basically then everything between ten yeah. and uh, six. So if well, he's not raising, my, my other idea was um, my probe frequency on the turn. So many of the hands I could pick to check down the river, like really enjoy betting turn for like some B thirty three B forty strategy, you know, like just like, pushing equity against his check back. Uh, five six six deuce, you know, five four seven four, you know, all of these kind of hands like probe very high frequency on the turn in my mind too. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my hand was a mix. Was a mix, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking like there is like some type of a chance he might like miss plus. But then again, it is like some offsuit hands. Like he's gonna have offsuit hands, right? It's going to be there. It's just like I don't like if the turn was jack or something. Like I think it's very easy to overbluff actually, or like it was three, mm -hmm. four. Doesn't really matter. But like because the like between ten and six card, it's going to connect with uh, basically a lot of cut shot type of bluffs. Those are going to be uh, those are going to be bears now. Then 
it's very likely like he needs to take and use like high frequency on the like smaller part like his bluffing freak uh, range will swing so he has to take more often those 7x and 5x most likely obviously he's gonna have some random uh stuff in there as well yeah but yeah like it's just what i'm thinking here damn 300k uh rng yeah he just had a zero v hand i guess and just was like okay cool do, do be fair from his perspective i think i would have fought but... i think i would have found a fold as well yeah <clears throat> they just don't believe me yeah they just don't believe me <laughs> they're right not to believe me go fucking damn it <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah just pretty standard limp iso for people like uh, limp call iso yeah for people that um familiar heads up 1092 they just calls against all in and calls against 3x you know but the ev of playing ip is just so much better than jamming yourself or something yeah, River was interesting here. I debated jam, uh, but like I didn't know if the deuce wants to jam or not. I could even yeah, 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 I could be 150 with a flush. I, 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 think, I could be 150 a flush here though as well. I think I would just bet bot with the deuce, so I would sure. just bot bot exactly. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Like I think I thought a deuce was worth like something around maybe this as well. So that's mm -hmm. that was my idea of building this. It's just kind of like uh it's gonna be a bot it, like going bigger questionable so i'm just going to choose a bot size that's yeah. like how i would like and then, and then, and then, and then you're very comfortable betting a flush for pot as well where like yeah exactly maybe it gets thin yeah i think you're supposed to be like betting too much here because he's supposed to be checking back a lot of two six right it's not like yeah two six yeah, does yeah, not want to i want to so. check it's definitely a board I want to check a pretty decent clip of the mm. sound just things. So in general, deuces and deuce two six and three three x because uh two six and three x does not ISO as much in heads up. Your uh those are not good pair boards for in position there. Yeah. For sure. Is this a call? Feels very close. No. No. What are you going to call here? I think it's pretty decently tighter than this, uh, just because of the jam shape. Ah, oh, it's the jam's like the jam's not very frequent, right? He's meant to play like I mean, it's like a very infrequent node basically, so it's how you perform against the shape of it. Um... Yeah, I think you're. Yeah, I mean, I imagine king nine offs really close. Yeah, I'd call king eight, king seven. Yeah, you're right. It's king ten. Oh. Even ace, yeah, it's ace just because of the jam it's, it's, it's because it's, it's because it's, it's really what it's what's really important for people to remember there, especially when you're playing against a good player. If you're playing against a bad player, King Nine Off would probably have to call if he's just overdoing jam node with like hands that like he just doesn't realize that the EV so much of uh, playing heads up comes from not folding pre flop and just like limping and playing heads up. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know playing the post flop IP is like where you make so much EV, but yeah, um, yeah, these are like stuff in wild and stuff like that. And this guy's just getting me, man. I'm just getting, <laughs> I'm getting bodied. This is like one of those hands you're just gonna have to run sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, great. And this is good enough. Like, I think this was like my bottom call here or something. It's like pretty close, but I'm pretty sure. It... Like by the time we're down to twelve, I don't think. Ah, uh, like I would always. But maybe, but it might be really close. It might be really close. Well, well, what well, one thing to say about this as well is like. You can never be like we can look at equilibrium. That is the one thing with the, all the solver solutions is. Do you think the guy is exactly jamming this type of range? Right? There's no fucking chance. I I, I think I I think he's over. He's probably overdoing ten six ten seven nine six nine seven as like shove first in. I would guess as well. Um, yeah, like by this by this eleven BB point or something. But unless you're like a short stack heads up player, you're probably not very close to this. So in general, like looking at yes, this is right. kind of off. Yeah. So you can see it's going to be like it's like zero EV basically, but mm -hmm. like it is zero. If people, if people jammed a too high a clip king for suit, it's like kind of just a call for sure. Yeah, but you can also make an argument is going to jam uh, king nine. He's jamming too many hands to dominate me. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. jam king. He, well, he, yeah, he did. He did jam king nine off, which is a pure. You know, it's like one pip. Yeah, so good on it. Yeah, so. but I do, do think you can I go would either way ball, first. Ball here as well. Bro, oh. I even made a fucking straight. I turned a flush straw and a good shot, and then I made the good <laughs> shot, but he had a better good. <laughs> well, GG. I mean, you basically called it though. As soon as I lost that first hand, you saw where the the wind was blowing. You know, there was a change. There was a change <laughs> in direction. Yeah, man. Sick fucking uh, yeah, yeah. run though. GG. I mean, it was a great. It was a great FT, You know, it was, yeah. I think it was a lot of fun for people to watch. So. Yeah.
How, how much uh, did you win? 1.2 million? 1.22. Do you want to do a reveal? Did you have... I, I had a... <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Did you have 100% yeah, for yourself? <laughs> no, but I but I had a big piece. I think. Ah, well, I'm happy for big you. Enough for, big enough for it was a very large skull. Okay. Um, yeah, my biggest prefordus was 800k live in Florida. So you're always thinking when you have a skull like that, you're like, fuck me, it's going to be hard to beat that one. <laughs> yeah. I only waited 15 months to do it, which is obviously very fortunate, you know. But, uh, very I think I played pretty reasonably on the FT. Obviously, there were some spots that's maybe raising a bit too wide, etc. But like for the most part, I think my strategy was pretty solid. You know? yeah, I, yeah, I think like maybe try to jam less and be slightly yes. tighter, especially if you're play, going yeah. to play like non-high stakes uh, rare pile labels. I think you're just going to mm -hmm. end up bunting. But other than that, it looks very good to me. Yeah, I, I was I was overall pretty happy with how I played. You know, given it was such a big streamed FT spot, everyone's watching, and obviously everyone feels a bit of pressure in those spots. You're playing for money that you basically don't play for very often at all in your career, right? So I can't be too <laughs> yeah upset about it. Despite, I... Obviously, despite losing the heads up with a big lead, like that, that initially that hurt a little bit, but then I, like it didn't even take me long to get over it. I was like, you know, what, whatever. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I guess that point you like if you make a score one point two million, you you must have been like. Yeah, it sucks to lose, but like I still won one point two million. So it's also, I mean, you're also comforted by the fact of how flat the payout structure is, right? So you're playing less big of a heads up than you might have been. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a good way to even look at it too. But um, yeah, yeah, I guess... so much of the more of the prize pool payout has been happening with the bigger risk premium because of like the bigger jumps. Uh, sorry, the more flat jumps, you know. So mm. uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy with it all, and it was a very you know it's good good to come on and review it and uh, get some. Yeah, get thanks some for joining me. Enjoy it. Congrats. To... All good, bro. And congrats had a again. Good time. Yeah, it was fun. Maybe, maybe you'll win another million during this scoop. Do it again. Yeah, I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll probably just have to do it just so I can come on again. You know. That's, yeah. That's gonna be the. <laughs> okay, you go win yeah. win a million, and we'll do it again. If I win a million, you yeah. you can join me in this well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah. Sounds good to me, bro. Okay, well, guys. Thanks for watching, and if you like this type of content, leave a comment and subscribe. See you guys around.